Assassin's Creed. I'm Gloomy. Today I'm joined by Azir. Um, <laughs> as my planned co-host, uh, sadly, it's a little bit late. We're working on either getting him here, dragging him out of the trash can, or like getting a replacement, whatever comes first. Till then, I hope I can entertain you all good enough for this very, very high series. It's two top teams playing against each other. Um, and yeah. Usually that's the point where I would ask some questions. So Azir, who do you think is gonna take it? Um, Azir, Shereem and Empire. I believe in Vitish and Diamond. Well, I'm a contrarian, so I must say I think Assassin's and Greed are gonna take it. Um, definitely no sanctuary bias here at all. <laughs> I also got it. Um, I mean, for me personally, they have like the best top lane in the league, right? I also think he got the award for best top lane in the league. Not a hundred percent sure, but like, uh. Uh, Shorty and and rookie of the split, as I just got information. Like, I think Jordy is such an incredible top laner, um, just able to take over the game single handedly, similar to something like a Banner X. But compared to Banner X, Jordy actually has a team, uh, <laughs> so yeah. And in, in the mid lane, we have uh, Trouble Bubble, which is personally one of my favorite uh, enemy mid laners to play against. and. I, I can talk a lot more about Assassin's Creed than I can talk about Vitage and Diamond. Um, because, you know, I know them a little bit better. But uh, Vitage and Diamond also, very, very strong team. I mean, it's, it is Vitage, right? Like, Vitage will always, like, it is one of the, the big dogs of the SLE, both these teams, like Vitage and Diamond and Pearl. And Diamond has been the one that was higher in the seeding. 
Um, so yeah, just love. Uh, it. My bad, my bad, my bad. Well, we have to say goodbye to Azir. Shreven Empire, thank you for having me. Well, bye bye Azir, and now I am joined by the beautiful and wonderful Dessa himself. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Again, <laughs> apologies for, for being a little bit late, you know, I might have forgot, but I'm sure hope Gloomy has kept everyone, you know, good company. I'm sure Gloomy the Goat himself has made a wonderful <laughs> use of our today's draft. And so far, I'm very much looking forward to these games because we've gotten a already an upset with yesterday's games, or a couple of days ago at least, but should be a good time. Should be a good time indeed, and... Uh, who do you think is uh, gonna take it today? Assassin's Creed or Vitus and Diamond? I think overall both rosters, I think, can take it today. It's when it comes to League of Legends, I think it's all about sort of who shows up on the day, right? And who sort of has come more prepared into series because series like this, you really can't. I feel like you can, of course, always there's gonna be a favorite coming in, but I think overall it's really hard to predict. But I think looking at the regular season as well, right, these two teams sort of village in diamond ending 10 on 6. So I think they, in my opinion, it's going to be a pretty even matchup because both teams are very close to each other, at least when the regular season did end. They're very, in, really, really close during the regular season, like you said. Personally, I think I give it to Assassin's Creed, Greed, but Assassin's Creed Greed give me a little bit more of the vibe that they could choke. But we are going to see if they choke, if they're going to win, who's going to take it. Right now, we are heading into the draft. Gonna be heading into draft here, and is there sort of any expectations for you coming into this picks? Because I know you as well, you may mid lane, if I'm not completely mistaken. So, sort of this mid lane matchup, what are your sort of thoughts on that one? Is it something that's gonna be exciting to you, or what are your general thoughts on it? Uh, this is a mid lane matchup that is extremely exciting to me. If I'm uh, not mistaken, Diamond is the one that has true loot in the mid lane, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is such an incredible mid lane matchup. Uh, Trilulu, one of the, the best mid laners in the league, and then Travel Bubble on the other side here in Assassin's Creed, which is my personal favorite mid laner to play against, right? Um, I, I think both are in, incredible mid laners who can show up on the day. We're also seeing here, like, British and Diamond banned both the Zoe and the Huey, two champion. Uh, Travel Bubble is incredibly good at. Like, I mean, his name, Travel Bubble, implies the Zoe. <laughs> and. Uh, he had an account where he only played Huey and uh, he went with like a 70 win rate to Diamond 2, I think, or Diamond 3. So he is very, very good on both these champions, but like this, uh, um, I hope there, there's going to be a lot of action around the mid lane. And if I'm not completely mistaken, I think Trouble Pobble might have a 100% win rate on the Zoe so far. I think every time I look at the sort of post results, right, and I see Trouble Pobble and get see Zoe, I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a win. So generally does tend to get banned away. Aatrox now picked up. Bolivar and Aatrox both very strong champions in the early game. I think Bolivar this season, especially with this split in SLE, has become an SLE staple. I think a lot of teams playing it at the moment and a very strong champion as well. So this top side gonna be really interesting, I feel like, for the side of Assassin's Creed. It's really interesting indeed. Personally, I'm not sure if I like Aatrox picked that early, as they are taking away the, uh, away the flags of the Woolly Bear. And Assassin's Creed is a team that is uh, willing to play the Woolly Bear top lane. Um, wait, 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 actually, can I say this? <laughs> well, I, I um... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's a flex pick, and they deny themselves the flex, the flex, right? And not sure if I like it that much. They could have like secured something else. Now instead, uh, Vitish and Diamond has the possibility to, to ban even more mid laners or to decide to ban our two supports uh, to get like this really obnoxious Karma lane. And the Tristana pick? Okay. It Spice. could be a lane swap. It could be a lane swap. Um, <laughs> something we have seen in the Pro Leagues coming up. The two best ADC for the lane swap uh, strategy is the Tristana and it is the Jinx. Uh, but with the Nico ban, I do think it is the Tristana mid lane, as Nico is a very, very good uh, pick into the Tristana. So probably just a safety ban to secure the Tristana mid lane here. Tristana mid lane is something we used to see, I feel like, in pro play all the time. Nowadays, not so much, and generally used as a counter to mages, right? And generally used as a counter to Azir, for example. It's a horrible matchup for Azir, generally. 
just because Tristana is very good with her rocket jump at being able to gap close, right? It gets very sort of up in your face and it has the ability to nullify all the range that Azir generally has. So I am expecting it for it to, it to be a Tristana mid as well, all the flex is still there. For it to go into the bot lane, it would be up against a blind mid laner so far, so Assassin's Creed not picked the mid of their own. It's gonna be the Gnar locked in, possibly, or should be into the Aatrox. What are your thoughts on that top lane matchup? Um, personally, not not the biggest uh, top lane main here in in, in uh, <laughs> but as uh, I would personally guess, that is the winning matchup for now, as he is most of the times pretty good into these melee the bruiser champions or the tanks. The only one that like the exception is the Aurelia, but uh, now I'm pretty sure a very good matchup into the Aatrox. But if they picked something like the Cyan, they could have still picked Luda Arc Five and could have went for lane swap. You know, just saying, just saying. <laughs> You really want the lane swap, huh? <laughs> You've really been watching pro play. <laughs> the SLE finals broke me. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I don't know what happened. But that was pure chaos and I loved it. So... No, um... I mean, it's SLE in general. No, generally like 90% of the times it just devolves to complete chaos anyway. <laughs> so I'm not at all surprised that you want to escape the chaos of SLE and watch some potentially more organized league, you know. But like like we tend to say over here at SLE, fake or zero SLE title so far. So who's the real winner? But so far we are seeing Rel locked in as well. Rel Varus in the bot lane. And so far last pick still yet to go for this Village Diamond squad will tell us if it is the Tristana mid or the Tristana ADC. So far we've seen Varus on the other side, or Rihanna gonna be locked in. So, Gloomy, it is a Tristana bot lane. Unless Village Diamond is going for the lane swap, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I also don't really like the, the Oriana pick here. Uh, I mean, it's nice with Diego, right? You put like your, your, your shield onto Diego, he dashes in, shockwave, uh, old execute from the Diego with the Heartbreaker and boom, reset, right? But, uh, and I, I'm if you're playing against an Ari, you don't want to be an immobile mage. Um, the moment she just steps up a little bit, Ari's just gonna flash charm into Volibear, jump on your face, or just Ari spirit rush into the charm, and Ori's just gonna die back to back to back to back. Assassin's agreed that it's uh, Assassin's Creed, a team very good playing around ganking the mid lane, getting travel bubble out of the lane, and then him having a lot of fun in the side lane. So, and, and just roaming around the map, creating creative plays as... He is a very creative player, very free-spirited, and it shows <laughs> a lot in his playstyle. Uh, so I really, really dislike the Orianna pick here, and unless Village and Diamond goes for the lane swap, I hate the Jasana as well. Jasana uh, is an ADC that's just generally... Uh, ge generally, not all that good at the moment, as there's just so much better options, it's still very uh, available here. God, I can't talk to this. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just... <laughs> but, you know, I just feel like, hey, that's a, uh, on the cut in the stream as well now. But um, there, I, I would have preferred so many more ADCs unless it is a lane swap. If it's a lane swap, I like it, but then I want to see a teleport and the demolish from the karma. I think it's a little bit confusing to me too as well, because it's going to be a karma down towards the bot lane, right? And generally, I feel like Karma Tristana is not an amazing pairing. Karma likes to sort of be around champions like the Ezreal, for example, right? Which is a very oppressive lane in itself, but likes to sort of be at, with an ADC that can poke, not necessarily full on engage. Where what Assassin's Creed have done here is they've seen the Tristana, they've seen the Karma pick down towards the bot lane a Rel Varus. So if this Tristana ever jumps in, especially post six, I feel like it's not going to be a good time for him. And overall, I think to me, sort of the bot side on the side of Assassin's Creed, I think should be better off in the 3v3, 2v2 in the early game, in my opinion. But Tristana's also one of those AD carries where, because like you said, Gloomy yourself, right? We don't really tend to see her that much. I feel like she has a lot more damage than people think. People are very susceptible, susceptible to thinking that because of her passive, right? She scales very well into the late game. She's not going to have any early game damage. But Tristan is one of those AD carries where, especially if you go with Hail of Blades, you can pump out a ton of damage even in the early game. Yeah, I mean, definitely her early game is, her early and mid game is like the biggest strength at the moment. Tristana gets her boots and first item. I, I think Tristana is one of the best one item spikes marksman in the game. 
Yep. Which is why she's so good in the mid lane, right? You just go to your one of your first item, just make place around the map, take a tower, and just be like, uh, jump around, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> and she, if, if the, the Vintage and Diamond gets the Tristana rolling, like uh, get the snowball, uh, start the snowball off the Tristana, she's going to be very, very dangerous. Being able to uh, go pick after pick after pick, just killing someone. But it could also be that we just see a Malphite as a, uh, on, on the ADC roll and just see Tristana jump in and five people feeling like, okay, I'm going to knock them all up. Oh, wait a second, I'm Tristana and just going <laughs> to die. Right? Something we've also seen in pro play, for example, NA, there was a player, I think, te tactical it was, I think. Yeah. Very <laughs> known for his Malphite ults on the Tristana. Something me as a Tristana player myself am also quite susceptible to. <laughs> <laughs> It's always the danger, right, of when you have a champion that can engage, but you're not too tanky. Is there's always the danger of you jumping at the wrong time, and then you just get over, like, sort of, you overplay your hand, and you just get completely blown up by the enemy team. <laughs> and running into, like, a Varus, an Aatrox, a Volibear, Ari, if you miss position, that can for sure happen. Yeah, it can happen for sure. The one big tool that Tristana has, though, um, is that you can buffer on, on, on your jump, right? Like, uh, if Ari spirit rushes into charm skew, you can buffer it if you time it correctly. Uh, which is, makes Tristana, if you play it perfectly, one of the safest champs in the game, as it's almost impossible to lock her down if you have the timing right on every ability. Not that like, easy, but... <laughs> I was gonna say, it's not that easy, but you can actually, it is, there's a lot of abilities in the game. That you can do it with, right? And a lot of abilities are the Assassin's Creed as well, but you can do it against Aatrox, especially against the knockout. Various Chains of Corruption as well, I do believe you should be able to do it against. Dari Charm as well. Well, I think one of the champions you might not be able to because the Magnet Storm pulls you in, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Maybe. Um, I know for, you can definitely jump out of the, like, I don't know which ability it is, but when Rel uses her, like, spear to poke forwards and stuns you, I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if she uses that ability, you can buffer that one. Uh, with the Magnet Storm, I'm not sure about the interaction, but I think the Magnet Storm pulls you in. Not 100% sure, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> uh, but Volley Bear and RECC is, in my opinion, one of the easiest abilities to buffer you jump on as you just see it coming 10 miles ago you just see it and you, you, you have so much time to to get your timing right to do the buffer unless the holy bear flashes on you so she has uh if they decide if assassin's and creed decide to put a lot of pressure here onto the bot lane with a roaming ari a spam ganking holy bear as long as you have that w ready you should be quite safe to get out of the ganks but i would be quite worried about the karma yeah, that's what I was going to say, because we talked about a lot, like, how mobile the Tristana is, right? But the one she's going to be laning with, the Karma, not so mobile herself. Outside of the movement speed you get from the shield, and plus you get the healing as well from your sort of chain that you can put on the enemy, which is a little bit of extra sustain as well. But if you've got a Rel and a Volibear jumping on you, as well as a virus sort of chains of corruption coming in, it's going to be a tough gank to avoid. So overall, I... In my opinion, at least, Assassin's Creed should play towards this bot side. I feel like, because like you said, it is a losing matchup in the top lane, or should be. Nar tends to beat out most bruisers just because of that range and be able to sort of poke them down very slowly. So it should be mostly the bot lane here for the side of Assassin's Creed. And they've got setup, right? They've got the Volibear, they've got the Rel, as well as if you can get the Ari down there with the Spirit Rush plus that Charm combo coming on in. So overall, I'm expecting for a lot of play to be around bot lane. But honestly, Gloomy, with the meta is right now, it seems like everybody playing around the bot lane. Well, it's been like that ever since season 11. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> ever since season 11, which team gets the ADC the most fed, this team wins. It's lovely being a mid lane main, but <laughs> <laughs> enough warning from my side. Um, I, I, I'm also like, I have the same opinion as you. Assassin's Creed should definitely play for the bot lane here. I would love to see Volibear ganking one or two times, uh, ganking the Ari one or two times, uh, helping her getting off the lane easily, uh, easily, as Orianna can be very, very annoying in these early, um, early game 1v1s. Uh, pre-level 4, uh, I'm pretty sure Ari loses, uh, 
quite all the traits. Level 1, you have a little bit of trade potential, but to level 4, level 5, you should never try to then properly trade against Oriana, she just out trades you there. Um, and if Oliver is just able to help the Ori, uh, getting to the level 4, level 5 easily, maybe getting a kill onto the Ori, getting the teleport, um, like, uh, make, yeah, forcing Oriana to teleport all the stuff to just help the uh, Ari out a little bit and then play together towards this bot lane, uh, funneling these skills into the virus. Uh, I think that's a play for Assassin's and Greed as Droidy is gonna win top lane in isolation, probably. Yeah, the thing is, as well, right, if you can force out the flash early out of Bubble Bonk with a potential flash charm out of Trouble Bubble, for example, and a commit on from the Volibear as well, it does mean that she's not gonna have that flash when. Trouble is gonna hit level six, which means with the spirit rush, as for with those three dashes and maybe his stun out of himself, it should be a pretty easy gank to set up. So I think this is one of those times where it's gonna have to be a good gank timer from the side of Assassin's Creed if they wanna pull it off. But finally on the rift for our first game of the day of this best of three so far, we are seeing sort of, to my opinion, no funny business so far of the classic five point out of both teams as neither team want to risk this level one this early on into the series. Yeah, I mean, first game, you wanna you wanna play it cool, right? You just wanna <laughs> like chill, take it a bit back, be like, okay, let's play some casual League of Legends, have some fun, you know? I well, never mind, Trouble Bubble disrespected <laughs> the honorable level one in the mid lane. Getting what he deserves with the trade back from Wobble Bunk. Getting immediately punished for it, right? Very much deserved, <laughs> like you said. And this is kind of what we talked about. Wobble Bunk is gonna be able to poke out, probably for the most part, out of that mid lane. And seeing maybe start on the top side as well is gonna mirror Jonathan Isaac. So both junglers, like we said, Gloovy, gonna be ending up at the bot side of them, trying to sort of help and support their bot lane out as both mid laners already trading very, very heavily. And that, that's just what what uh, what I was talking about. Uh, you usually will lose the trades against Oriana here. I mean, I I did say that o overall level one of the Ari is favorable in the trades, but only if you short trade it, right? The the Oriana passive is just so oppressive in the early game, getting more damage on uh, each auto attack on the same target. Just a very very oppressive ability here, and yeah. Uh, I wanted to say something. I forgot what I wanted to say. That's what we love. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it happens to the best of us, it's okay. <laughs> like, like my mom always says, you know, if it's important enough, it'll come back to you. So maybe, you know, if you remember at some point, we can hopefully return to it. Maybe, maybe yeah. not, but there is a ward being placed here. You can see at the, towards the mid lane, outside, right that bush from the side of Di Village and Diamond. Which does mean that sort of any ganks in the mid lane, we talked about it, right? You want to try to gank Wolfwonk early to blow that flash, as they're again trading very heavily here. But that ward is going to deny any gank potential, as maybe it's going to be coming from the bot side. So I think a great ward and great awareness out of Wolfwonk here. Yeah, it was, it's really, really good. I mean, uh, every coach is going to tell, tell their mid laner, hey, do that ward here in the early game. <laughs> and it's just so, so incredibly useful, and you can never go wrong with it. And we just see Jordy is just demolishing Benjamin here at the moment in the top lane. I mean, we talked about this being a winning matchup for Benjamin, but he is taking quite the toll here, has been suffering a little bit, not the highest of health bars, and maybe now trying to potentially set up a gank here. I think for the most part, just looking to counter this bot lane, you want to be around so Jonathan doesn't get it for free, but now the crab is going to be what they're fighting towards, but this is going to be a favorable fight for the side of Assassin's Creed as Jonathan Isaac is just forced out. Yeah, he's just forced out, nothing you can do, just taking the crab, he's just uh, gonna try to reset here to go to the top crab as fast as possible, so he doesn't get uh, double scuttled, even though it's not as impactful as it used to be, like back in the season 9, season 8 days, but still, being double crab, it's just, it, it's just a mental advantage now for Assassin's and Greed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jonathan has it completely in the dumps right now. He's already he's turned off chat. He's definitely himself <laughs> in the Discord. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. He's just so sad, so far gone. But Benjamin again just struggling in this matchup, which I would assume Gloomy should go the way of the Nar most part in the early game. Yeah, I personally also assumed that it would go to the Nar. Um, like I said, not a top line expert. Maybe this is the easiest a track mass matchup <laughs> in the world, and Jordy uh, mind controlled Benjamin into counter picking himself. Uh, <laughs> maybe that is what happened. But no, nothing is gonna happen in the top lane. Jordy's just 
gonna take the way safely before his tower and just Jordi just completely winning the matchup against the Whoa, we are seeing a bot lane fight here as they uh, maybe is engaging here onto Josiah. Josiah is going incredibly low, uh, being forced to flash out. Delph missing his crucial stun, but maybe still on the chase. Flash forward, no CC coming out. Josiah is still alive. The arrow is connecting, and first blood goes over to Assassin's Creed. Yeah, Delph with the flash shuttering strike there does not quite, does not quite land that one, and it does mean that it's gonna be sort of a wasted flash. But Josiah still does end up falling. That is another kill. That's what we talked about. Right in draft, this just done a very mobile, very hard to kill. But the karma not so much now gonna be without sums as well. No heal, no flash, which means that he's gonna be even more immobile if maybe wants to go for a potential round two later on in this bot lane while those summoners are down. Yeah, I mean definitely it's what you wanna try to look for. Ari also having the levels the spirit rush available to her and the teleport to her. He got the reset, only four CS ahead and so is teleport. Uh, that's actually Incredible from Travel Bubble here. Uh, don't know how he did it, but uh, he's he's easily able to just do a play in the bot lane, so use the Spirit Rush, get a kill for his bot lane, teleport back into his lane. Jonathan Isaac did get the rum, I think. Yeah. Yeah. At least something back, right, for the side of Village and Diamond. As well as the grubs picked up, keep in mind, so it was still a trade off objectives for these two sides. A dragon for grubs, but I think for me, Look at these two teams. Grubs definitely can seem worth it because you have a Tristana on your team, right? But so far, this bot lane push hasn't really been going the way of Village and Diamond. When you generally see a Tristana, you expect for her to have push, right? Just because of that E and being able to sort of blow up these waves very quickly. But with how the side of Assassin's Creed have managed this bot lane wave, they sort of managed to have the push pretty much every time, as it's going to be Trouble Bubble taking a little bit of a poke, but he does have the Spirit Rush still available, so for the most part, should be very safe in that mid lane. I mean, Ari, once she reaches level 6, can is unable to die in her lane, uh, as long as she's the ultimate available. And, like you said, the Village and Diamond bot lane should have the push 24-7, having two of the easiest pushing champions with Karma and Tristana, but Jonathan Isaac may be looking for a gank into the bot lane. Delph is trying to dash out, he is being stunned. The bomb from Tristana is dealing almost no damage yet, as she only has a high noon, noon quiver, not high noon. Oh, <laughs> only has a noon quiver. <laughs> it's a high noon quiver, baby. Oh, that, if you're playing a high noon champion, you buy noon quiver, that's what it should be. A oh. high noon quiver. <laughs> it's a really? secret passive, you know, high noon gym. But Benjamin, under 30 in the top lane, ooh, this Nar is gonna be in trouble, Gloomy. Yeah, this Nar is gonna be in big big trouble he is very close to the mega now form though the wave is only now crashing in maybe yes yeah, that's the Greek played a little bit too slow but uh, pretty nicely played by benjamin here it is nicely played but i want to say the side of vitagen or the side of assassin's greed sorry if they're trying to make that play i feel like with you being able to disable the tower as well having the stun on maybe i feel like you could have forced that a little bit more and maybe gone a little bit er earlier as well as benjamin now, Banog, like you said, get the Mega Nar, get his Nar bar, he's gonna be able to live. And overall, not a successful player, as probably potentially fishing for something. Yeah, he is probably trying to fish something with his team being there. Shipix is now engaging onto the, the ADC of Assassin's and Greed, as he is just being one shot. No counterplay available here for the virus. Now, Spirit Rush is forced to be used. I don't know how he got to see what he did, and now the Ari is dead. I think that was the Mantra W from Josiah. If yes, it was beautiful. <laughs> but it, it looked very weird. Yeah, it definitely so. And ends up being a kill now for the side of Village and Diamond. As we take a look back at this, it all starts with Double Bubble. I want to say being in a very weird position, considering his sort of support is nowhere to be seen. Delph is still very far away. But it's actually I Won't Leash who ends up getting caught there, ends up dying as well. Trouble Bubble with a dash in a reset on Jonathan Isaac. And like you said, it is the Mantra W that ends up just catching Trouble Bubble there. Ends up being the shockwave used as well, just to really secure that kill, make sure they get that. But that is two kills picked up now for Village and Diamond. And Gloomy, look what the kills went on. It is Jonathan Isaac, this Viego, a champion we talk about so much, needs to snowball exactly where you want these kills on. Yeah, I mean, you're very, very happy. Vego or Tisana, probably D2 champs where you'd want the kills in the early game. Um, Vego can single-handedly take over a game as he gets the healing from his ultimate when he takes over the souls. And no, his passive is taking over the souls, not the ultimate. But still, Heartbreaker, very, very strong ability. Being able to reset four times in a team fight 
kind of disgusting. Yeah, but now we are seeing a fight around the grubs. It's maybe is turning onto Desire and how much is that? He just couldn't be able to get himself out. Unfortunately, a little bit too deep there, and it's still gonna be two more grubs here picked up for the side of Assassin's Squeed. It's three grubs actually. It's three grubs apiece. And earlier I said I would personally take the Drake over the grubs, but now that since it's three grubs apiece, I think I would definitely take the early drake over these grubs because generally grubs if you're gonna go for them you want at least four five even that six if you really can get it but when those, you have three and you're forced to sort of trade three for three the early drake is definitely gonna be very valuable here for the side of assassin's creed yeah i mean overall i think you would be quite happy with the drake the only problem is additional it is an ocean drake which is overall in my opinion pretty useless and i am still a firm believer in the grubs, I think three grubs already what? incredibly strong. I am a firm believer in grubs. Um, three grubby, only three though. Like, like it's it's not broken. I'm not saying it's gonna win you the game, but I feel like having three grubs is more valuable than one ocean drake. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, you're not fair. We will we'll extensively discuss this during the break. Oh, Jordy are... is taking a beating. Oh wait, oh. Benjamin, both are being oh, forced to flash, no. Benjamin is not a Mega Knight anymore, Jordy doesn't have the world and they're available to him, it's forced to flash out, but it means flash for flash. But we are seeing a Drake here probably going over to Vision Diamond, they are taking the Drake, Delph is flashing in with the Magnus Storm, everybody is going low, Josiah is one shot, Trouble Bubble get the kill, he has one more Spirit Rush stack available thanks for the kill, dashes forward and flash, Ooh. beautiful play by Trouble Bubble here, now going on to Shipex, the bomb is being stacked, Shipex now has to jump available again, is dying though. Two I won't leash, maybe now trying to get more. Jonathan Isaac going incredibly low, gets the one for one under the tower. Like maybe two for one? No, the shield from the rail barely saves her. And I gotta admit, that was a life saving shield, I think, out of L because I think for sure would have gone down. But Wobble Bunk, my hero in this play, because he played that. Or sorry, Trouble Bubble on the other <laughs> side. He played that very well here on the Ari. You can see uh, the Spirit Rush hits that Q onto both. As well, the orb of exception, a lot of damage. I want to say a great jump here from Shipex as well to get himself out of danger. But this flash Q right here, whoa, 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 never seeing it coming and actually gets Shipex with the charm here as well. The charm lands the cleanse just a little bit too late. Delph jumps in as well. And that is lo a lot of kill security here for the side of Assassin's Creed. Granted, the Drake going over to the side of Village and Diamond, but overall, I think that is very worth it. It is malignance completed for Trouble Bubble. And Blade is rooting and boots, but we just got a confirmation that was complete before. But Jonathan Isaac now going on to Delph. Delph is incredibly low, maybe alone against the bot lane. The wave is almost not Jipex taking two tower shots. Now it's going incredibly low. If Assassin's Creed tries to do something, maybe right now is a good time. Bob Bong is there, Shrug available to him. Nothing is going to happen. Trouble Bubble just crashing in midway. And this is just, I think it's a hard play to pull off as well, with maybe being around Volibear so strong in the early game but like you said gloomy blade of the Run king oh, for i won't great, great rush it's available in the mid lane wobble bunk with oh. the shockwave to stay oh no he takes the wave ah that's what i call an sle mid laner i don't care about trading i just want the wave <laughs> <laughs> i mean it looks good for him either way right either he hits the shockwave it looks good or he misses the shockwave <laughs> and he could just be like i was for the wave Trust yeah. me, it's fine. It's fine. i never wanted to hit it Anyway. The epitome of an SLE mid laner. I'm not gonna take a risk, just let me take the wave. <laughs> <laughs> let me take the wave and press B, please. Well, Jodal misses the charm, Jonathan Isaac misses the W, and who cares about skill shots? I just want minions. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> they're playing for the minions. That's all. It is. They're playing for those casters, man. They're very important. You know, a lot of gold in those minions, and I generally do think as well. With the Spirit Rush being down from Trouble Bubble, if that sort of Spectral Maw, I think it is, does hit, if that double out of Diego gets that stun in, with the Heartbreaker being available, I think Jonathan is might have been oh, able to get a kill there. He's trying to engage into Josiah. Josiah is being, going incredibly low. Magnus Storm was activated. It already ran out. Josiah is still alive. So much to see and still coming out. Josiah now being fossil flat. Fallbong is there. No ultimate available by either of the mid laners. Actually, never mind. Spirit Rush now available. Any second now, it is there. Wolbong going incredibly low. The Shockwave. Almost up again, but not soon enough. 
great fight there out of Assassin's Creed and like you said Gloomy Trouble Bubble just gets that Spirit Rush in on time and is able to use it at the back end of that fight. I don't think they need it at the end of the day but still does end up getting it available and it all starts here right with a great catch and great denial here onto Shipwreck's jump doesn't get him quite far enough and here comes the crash down out of maybe but he does end up falling a Shipwreck. Granted, it falls right after the Chains of Corruption. We're a little bit wide there, I want to say, but a great charm here onto Wolbunk as well. I want to say if John Wool dashes the other way, possibly able to get Josiah there as well. But overall, in the heat of the moment, those are kind of small things that are very hard to spot and very hard to do. I think we're in the middle of a fight, but overall, Gloomy, a great fight there out of Assassin's Creed. I managed to crack that bot lane tier 1 as well. Yeah, I mean, you're incredibly happy when you're Assassin's Creed there, and wait, uh, never mind, you're not happy enough, they maybe want more, but never mind. But yeah, like I said, you're gonna be incredibly happy just with how much you're gonna get there. You, I mean, both tier 1s are gone now, which is quite happy, as you want Ari and Oriana to side against each other, if you're Assassin's Creed. Um, if Oriana steps up a little bit too far, as you see, uh, she did opt for the Ludens and not for the Saras. So, uh, Ari, having the Storm Surge, an item I really, really, really hate. But Travel Bubble <laughs> is of the opinion the only thing that matters is damage. So he does like the Storm Surge on some of these champions. I did have a discussion with him about it some days ago. Ari is just going to run down the Orianna in the side lane. And so you are happy cracking these tier 1 towers. So you can just force the Isolate the 1v1 there. And overall, that's why we are seeing, right? Shipex and Josiah down towards the bot lane to help out Wobblebonk. Because like you said, Gloomy, in the isolated 1v1, Trouble is gonna take in 9 times out of 10 unless something massive happens. With him being ahead by a full item here as well, and... Well, we have a little bit of a lull time here, I wanna uh, see, as the... Carol's being... <laughs> huh? <laughs> Teleport is coming in from Benjamin, though. <laughs> he wanted the minions, I think. Again. Oh, yeah, he took everything out of the way. <laughs> Some, somehow Vintage and Diamond got the river control. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but they are taking the Drake with getting the, the river control pretty easily. Benjamin being very, very close to the Mega now. So if somebody steps up a little bit too far, he can just flash old in there. Maybe trying to look for the top of play, but the uh, Mega now being activated. Not having this far off a jump. Delph, beautiful oh Magnus coming in from Delph. Double bubble with the flank and this is a disaster. The Vintage and Diamond being dismantled by Assassin's Creed here. Jonathan Isaac might not be done yet. I uh, I think Travel Bubble should always be. Never mind, Jonathan Isaac! Yeah. That's Viego for you. Ah, I <laughs> love junglers. That is Viego for you. You said Benjamin was looking for something big here. Delph is the one who looks for something big. Magnet Storm onto the entire rest of the team here this engage is gorgeous and after that it is just cleaned up from the side of assassin's creed and a great play out of them that uh, granted jonathan isaac does end up picking up a kill here with the heartbreaker and i'm telling you diego does a surprising amount of damage in this 1v1 so he does end up getting one back but it is drake as well over to the side of assassin's creed and overall gloomy i gotta say assassin's creed have had pretty clean of a game so far yeah, I mean, um, aside from like a, some little mistakes here and there, um, Assassin's Creed played it incredibly well. Uh, setting up these team fights, uh, the way they are playing for the team fight, they I thought it was a little bit of a weird play dropping the the river control here, but they are like, okay, take it, get into the position you want. But that's exactly what we want. We want you to color. We want you to take this position so we can just let the rel flash in. The only one. Uh, reacting properly was the Viego instantly flashing out, which were beautiful reaction times from Jonathan Isaac here. But the rest of the team, which is standing in the magnet zone, and just boom. <laughs> 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 four boomers on the sides of Village and Diamond here, not being able to react. And this is just exactly what Assassin's Creed wanted. They know what they want, and they were able to play for it. And this is something that most of the teams can't do. It's <laughs> death. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think, definitely fair enough, and I'm glad that we have a little bit of a lull point now, because the point I was trying to make earlier, I thought we potentially look for a 1v1 against Benjamin, I want to say his favorite to take that, but this Storm Surge on the RE, I absolutely hate it. Thank you, think, thank you. I think this is, to me, an item that was good for a couple of patches, right? It has absolutely got it to the ground as Benjamin. 
Oh, oh that's God. the storm surge value dealing five damage. It just doesn't do damage. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> storm surge was an item that was broken for one patch, okay, for another patch, and after that it was dead. <laughs> It was broken for one patch, they nerfed it a little bit, then it was still buildable in another, and after that they just never want- we'd never see the item anymore. Yeah, it's just really really bad, but now we are seeing a teleport coming down from the Aatrox, Wobblebunk having Flash and the Shockwave available, he does hit the champion, not the minions, but now no mana left, Body Oriana, tick 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 tick, and she is not- I think she's gonna die? I mean, no way for her out here. The clock has ticked, not even 300 gold, that is an FF jungle diff go next. Yeah, one on four so far on the Vidigen Diamond mid laner. Not a great look, I feel like, for Wobble Bump this game. Meanwhile, on the other side, Trouble Bubble, I think, has had a fantastic game so far. Being able to find a lot of these picks. As oh, wait, so kinda... we are oh, stroking him a little bit too much as he is on a very bad. Oh, 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 oh shit, picks! <laughs> <laughs> now, Jonathan Isaac finds himself in a weird position now. Jordi and Del, the Aatrox does not have the world uh, ender available to him, Nar is teleporting up, Benjamin now is in his mega form and not seeing them but pushing them back so so much, Del is going down, Jordi still alive but finally falls to Oriana getting her revenge kill back, Travel Bubble misses the charm, it's Jonathan Isaac now still, no, they're just gonna go for the Baron. Potentially looking to go for the Baron, I think not gonna start it with how low ship X is. Is you're gonna look for the wards instead, clear that vision on out. But like you said, I feel like there was a good ultimate there from Benjamin onto multiple members. Could not quite get in the stun that Shipex is gonna save the life of Trouble Bubble <laughs> to start us off with. And an unfortunate buster shot there. But Jordi with a great deal of CC hits, almost all three Qs and Delph again, Magnus Storm trying to pull in as many people as he can. But Benjamin with that great ultimate hits onto three. A lot of displacement there, just throwing chaos into the mix. They end up picking up two kills there as well and almost picks up a third, but not quite as the Q does not land. And Shipex now in the mid lane, gonna be looking to push that one on in. It is a gloomy, we are 21 minutes in and the gold is <laughs> dead even. This is crazy to see. This is exactly what we wanted to see, right? We wanted to see an even matchup. Maybe we did not want to see the butter shot from the Tristana, but overall, <laughs> this game, hype. As we are saying it's high, Benjamin is ulting Aatrox. Jordi, what was that? The fight is still going on. The Trouble Bubble may be in trouble himself, as there is no bubble available to him. Maybe going incredibly low. Jonathan Isaac now in a very weird position. His team is there on his way. Crafting chain has been used by the Varus. And now they are trying to kill the Ori... The, the, oh, not the Ori... The, the other support from the other teams. Shipex has killed the Rel and... A great fight out of them. Dragon now should be picked up here for the side of Village and Diamond. And like you said, Jordi with a little bit of an uncharacteristic misstep there. Maybe a potential looking for a steal here, but a little bit too far away, not gonna opt in for it. And Jordi just ends up getting caught very early on here into the fight. Jonathan Isaac, I wanna say, if you're looking for a reset on the Diego, I think Aatrox is one of the champions to get it on very, very strong as well in these team fights, end up getting the reset onto the Aatrox and with Trouble Bubble having to use those Spirit Rush defensively, can't really do anything in this fight, he has no ultimate, no stacks left and Shipek ends up picking up that second kill as does another kill onto the Tristana but Jonathan Isaac, two items, 450 shutdown gold as well, this man has absolutely popped off on the Viego this game and he's about 2800 gold ahead of his jungle opponent as well. Yeah, Jonathan Isaac trying his best to keep his team in the game. Even Shipex was trying to save his enemy. <laughs> Jonathan Isaac trying to save his team on the other hand. And incredible game here from Jonathan Isaac. And the one thing that I have to say during these team fights, the yeah, Ari just feels so useless compared to the Oriana, since one of these has uh, a useful item and the other doesn't. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, maybe we, we we are hating on the Storm Search here, but it's just unironically does nothing. And I feel like you're making it so much harder on your team. You, I feel like you're turning yourself... You, I don't know how to say it without sounding too toxic, but maybe I have to, to wait for it. Uh, okay, no, um, I don't have to... Why do I? I do um, okay, basically... Do oh, wait, never mind. The Wizard of Diamond is trying to save me from that mistake as Delph is just gonna get out. And now Teleport coming in from Wobblebunk and... 
I mean, that was, oh wait, Benjamin now being off position and I mean, Assassin's Creed got the teleport from Witcher's and Diamond here. It's a, like a small win, right? But it's these small wins that eventually get you those bigger leads as well. Like you said, Bubble won't gonna be without a teleport. While Trouble Bubble and Jordi both still have their own. You can see as well, Jordi in the bot lane is gonna be facing up against Benjamin. So, so far, I think Benjamin had a, has had a pretty decent game for himself. I wanna say the laning phase not quite going his way. But that could also be us, because like we said, Gloomy, we are neither top lane <laughs> experts here. So it could potentially, it's a Aatrox favorite matchup, who knows? You know, but as well, I did see someone in chat say that Nar is pretty weak before level 5 and level 6, and sort of that early game status. So I think it is just Jordi playing well on the Aatrox, as now he's going to meet Jonathan Isaac in the jungle, and Jonathan Isaac is just going to walk over, give him a little bit of a slap in the face, and say, this crap is fine. Yeah, I mean, she's just like, come here, baby girl, slaps the Aatrox, takes the crab, and just be happy with it. Getting revenge for the early double crab from the side of Assassin's and Greed, but... Uh, I wanna go back to the point that I made. Because yes. you wanted me... Uh, um, I feel like the Ari now just being a dead weight, basically, for the team. Uh, so I'm... She's just damage-wise constantly gonna be extremely behind. Now also going for the Rabadon and just like you wanna go for the full burst, full damage, but you're having a useless item and then also Ionian boots. Um build just doesn't make sense. Build is kinda dog shit. No stats Ooh. other than AP. Burst that isn't proper burst and I hate it. <laughs> I'm I'm very glad I heard that. I'm very <laughs> glad because generally, you know, people don't wanna do the hot takes on the desk, but that is a very hot take and Honestly, Lumi, I think for the most part I agree with you, because I really hate Storm Surge as an item, <laughs> and I don't think- we saw it in the top lane, right? We saw the proc go through, it didn't really do any damage, and that's just Storm Surge for you. It's not in a good state, I don't really think you should build on any champion right now, especially we've seen the Lich Bane Ari, right? It's very good, it does a lot of damage, a lot of people are building at the moment, but the Storm Surge so far not- really being useful. Like you said, it is going to be the Rabadons next, so maybe that's going to add some much needed AP, some much needed damage into his build as well. But so far, we have just seen the side of Village and Diamond starting to take over a little bit because they don't get their comp, right? It's just team fight. You've got Nar with the big CC, you've got Oriana with the big shockwave, as well as being able to dive in with Jonathan and Isaac onto that backline. Great player and a great champion to be able to deliver that ball onto those Squisher members. And Shipex starting to scale up into this late game, right? Kraken and Navori both completed here. And the lo lo the later this game gets, the more range is going to be on Shipex, and the easier it'll be for the Tristana to play the game just due to that passive. Yeah, passive of Tristana being such a powerful tool, the the ult and the E having more range is just so disgusting. So, uh, uh, the only thing that's going to happen if, if Shipex ever decides to use his W aggressively, which every Tristana player does, uh, he is gonna die. <laughs> but if he has enough self-control to not do it, then it would be pretty easily as British and Diamond. Once again, having the river control, teleport is now coming in from Travel Bubble, but it's gonna be way too late unless you're trying to force a fight after it, which I would not like either. Um, now, maybe it's not... Wait. What was that? What? You see the big win here, right? You see the minions <laughs> that Village and Diamond just lost under that wave. There was three casters right there. And those three casters, they're never gonna get back. So overall, a huge win here. A monumental win for the side of Assassin's Creed, I wanna say. It is just such a mental gap with those minions being lost. But tier 2 now gonna be under threat for the side of Village and Diamond. They should be easy pickings. And overall, Gloomy, it just it seems like the side of Assassin's Creed, while yes, they did just secure a tower for themselves, I feel like they're a little bit off pace here as it's so point now. Onto Village and Diamond and Benjamin, this man's definitely looking for something when he's back. Yeah, I mean, Benjamin trying to find something, but they maybe it's gonna happen something right there. But this game, the early game, very aggressive, very well paced, but at this point, it's just teleports being wasted for nothing, and I'm just so confused at what is happening. <laughs> it does sort of feel like I do agree with that the game has slowed down a little bit here and that's also just like we're almost 30 minutes into the game right these death timers are gonna get a lot longer the later we go on so any mistakes that happen now compared to the early game is gonna be a lot more punishable as well as Baron being up Baron being on the cards as well 
It means that if you catch out even one member, especially if it's a jungler on either side, it's gonna be a monumental catch, potentially leading you to that Baron. But that's with that saying, I feel like neither of these junglers are easy to catch, right? As... I mean, uh, oh, the Grappling Chain is being used, and Jonathan Isaac is just gonna run out now, Trouble Bubbly. Oh, beautiful Spirit Rush into Jump, and Chipix is gonna fuck up his W, still flashes out, dies after to Trouble Bubble, and... That's the NDC go. Beautiful shock of Jonathan Isaac now going in alone into five people. He is quite tanky, but not tanky enough as he is just the Diego going down to the various and Jordi now trying to go for more. Is he the next one that tries to play full tank while he is in the full tank? Goes into all enemies. No, his team is bamping him to go out, but Benjamin is running him down. Trouble Bubble hitting the jump, but it is way too late. Bubble oh Bank now. Oh, beautiful ultimate by Benjamin hitting two people to so seeing them being stunned. I would leash with a nice flash, flashing out to a good. Uh, position but dealing no damage he's poking the nar but finally the nar falls as he's going back to the ice bay ice age An absolute beautiful and chaotic team fight i feel like it all starts here with like you said benjamin just played this very aggressively very confident on the nar and i want to highlight here something that delft does as well if you look at the rel as soon as he gets the cc onto i won't leash one tries to go in here but Delph is just completely CCing the Orianna here. No way for him to get through onto I Won't Leash. I Won't Leash ends up flashing away there as well. Picks up the kill, but it is so low health bars on their side. They actually went for the Baron, managed to pick it up. I'm surprised with how how their health bars were so low, but they are going to get the Nash and overall now have a 3,000 gold lead. Yeah, I mean, this is... The thing is, I, I, I feel so bad for, for Jonathan Isaac here. Jonathan Isaac being two levels ahead, almost 100 CS, and like Jungle, <laughs> Jungle Lift is so incredible, but this team is just griefing him so badly in this game. I do uh, feel like, as well, if they get the setup right on the side of Village and Diamond for some of these team fights, it is there, right? They've got the comfort, they've got the Oriana, they've got Jonathan Isaac, but overall, we haven't really seen, I feel like, big shockwaves out of Wobble Bunk. I feel like, for the most part, I feel like this Oriana hasn't been that useful and we mentioned right it should be an easy deliver with the ball with having Jonathan Isaac the Diego on your team but I feel like we just haven't seen that so far I don't know if you agree with me Gloomy but that's at least how I see things uh he he got like some okay ults like hitting two people in a team fight which was nice he had no game changing ults yet he had some okay-ish ults that but ones that you won't uh, properly see but I will talk about this a little bit later so it's not gonna be a fight in the bot lane river crafting chains once again go white he cannot hit this ultimate to save his life the delf going down Jordy going down maybe would have changed if one skill shot was hit but now beautiful fight from British and Diamond getting two picks but they are trying to go for more Jonathan Isaac now being directly next to the bear and he is slaying him as the flowers are blooming in the darkness the bear is dying Never mind, Jonathan Isaac is being turned on maybe with a beautiful double kill and still an ace for British Diamond. Never mind, the is alive, not an ace, but four <laughs> kills. Very close to being an ace there. They did end up picking up four, but I want to say I won't leash. As well doing a lot of damage there with maybe in the bot lane. Managed to pick up an extra kill for themselves now. Trouble Bubble with a push towards this mid lane. Keep in mind, he does have the Baron buff as well. Imagine so a glitch brain. <laughs> able to pick this tower up. I was just going to say as well, would go <laughs> down a lot faster if he had glitch brain. <laughs> but instead, he went for Storm Surge because he felt like wasting gold. So it is going to be instead a dragon here picked up for the side of Village and Diamond. And Lume, I gotta admit, I know we're really hating on the Storm Surge, but I think for the most part, it's warranted. No, no, it's not. The Storm Surge is not warranted. I don't care. No, no, the hate on the Storm Surge. Oh, That's the hate, yes, said. the hate is warranted, yes. <laughs> I thought the, the, the buy, I was very confused for a second. I was like, why are you stabbing me in the back like that, my man? <laughs> I thought we were on the same team. Oh, no, we are definitely on the same page about the Storm Surge. Oh, Crypto Bloom, though, could change I like things. Crypto Bloom. I like that. You, okay. I feel um, like Cryptloom is this really funny item because when it was released, everyone was like, oh my god, that's gonna be so OP for supports. And then, like, no supports <laughs> build it because of the healing. And it ends up just being this magic pen item for mid laners. But overall, I do want to say that I feel like a lot of people in the mid lane are building it on this mage, especially. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very powerful tool. You always like uh, magic pen. The problem with voice stuff always said it that it gives you very little stats out of the AP and the magic pen itself. Crippling have a very full powerful passive plus the plus the um 
ability haste that it gives you. And it's just a very, very strong item. And unless the enemy team stacks magic resist, you always want to go Crypt Bloom. The moment the enemy st starts to stack magic resist, you should opt to the Void Staff instead. This is uh, something a lot of mid laners do not do. Let's imagine we would uh, think about what items we build and start using our brain and not lose game to Shopkeeper. That would be <laughs> too hard. So, like, not even pro players do it. Like, we can't expect it from SLE players. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, man. I mean, then again, SL is so much higher of a status than pro plays as well. So, realistically, like, <laughs> realistically, like, I'm expecting a lot more from SLE than I am, especially from <laughs> uh, the NA side of things. <clears throat> but now on the top lane, we're looking for a little bit of a contestion here as the top lane are potentially under threat. And something we didn't bring up, I don't know if we're gonna have the time as both of these teams are looking, but. Something we didn't bring up as well, Village and Diamond ended up securing Black Dragon Soul earlier on into the game. Triple Mountain Tricks for them. So they're getting a lot of free resistance this year and a lot of free shield out shields as well with that soul. So overall, they're going to be very tanky and I feel like tough to kill. Um, the mid lane tower finally falls here for Village and Diamond. And like you said, they're going to be so, so damn tanky with the Mountain Soul. I'm gonna be real, as the amazing caster that I am, I didn't even notice they took the mountain so. Um <laughs> <laughs> But this makes the song search even more useless by the way. I just, well, just wanna yeah. say it. <laughs> I mean, is is that possible though, considering a storm surge? Like yeah, if you if you're on zero, can you really go like down? Yeah, you can go minus. Ooh. So, My, ooh, so okay, so if we if you were at zero before before the mountain soul, what what kind of minuses are we looking into? Um, minus fifty because that's the gold of the nexus, and I think ooh. right the nexus gives fifty gold, right? Yeah, that's why they focus the waves more because nexus gives no gold. <laughs> These True, waves man. are clearly worth a lot more gold than the Nexus. <laughs> but, I hate it. Travel Bubble is playing the map so well here. Being in side lane 24 7, so much split point. Imagine he had a lit spray. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, as much as, we, as much as we are hating on the Storm Surge, I feel like it would be, especially if we're gonna play the split push style, gonna be the one who creates the pressure. Lich Bane would be a lot more useful for these objectives, but we're gonna be starting up here gloomy. A potential fight under our noses here as the TP is coming in. Uh, Vidish and Diamond probably really wants to do that fight here as the Baron is not being stolen. Vidish and Diamond gets the Baron. Beautiful ultimate by Benjamin here being in the backline alone. I won't leash. It's being ran down by the now. Ari gets the shuttle onto the Tristana and it's the solo lanes against the world and I won't leash is being run down by the other solo lane. Wallbank finally takes down the Aatrox and... Uh, wait, there is going to happen more. Jonathan Isaac, they're ulting right into the charm, and Travel Bubble still has one Spirit Rush available. Not anymore. I won't leash will be flashed on. Jonathan Isaac goes on a killing spree, trying to get more, and. No, not trying to get more. He did already get more, but. <laughs> Beautiful fight, people, with Edition Diamond. Oh, yeah, this was well acted by Jonathan Isaac, especially as well. Being able to secure that Baron buff, right? And maybe tries to go for the steal, but like you said, Gloomy, unfortunately not getting the spite on time. He falls very early on into this fight as well. Benjamin doing a fantastic job of getting that two man ultimate. And Jonathan Isaac now gets the first reset. He gets his second reset, I believe, as well. And when we talk about, right, if Jonathan Isaac can get these resets in these fights, they're going to be very strong heading into it. But now it's going to be a mid lane inhibitor tower picked up base. Of Assassin's Creed can, does get cracked here, but Gloomy with this bot lane in being down, I feel like this is still anyone's game because it is gonna be one fight. I feel like, and the game should gonna end. Yeah, I feel like the thing. Um, I if you're Assassin's Creed, I don't think you want to go for the fights. Uh, Village and Diamond team comes just being a lot stronger in these team fights as an Oriana at some point of the game will outvalue the Ari in the fight itself. Um, and Assassin's Creed has shown this game so far. They are playing the map a lot better than their opposition. Uh, I think Travel Bubble playing the map amazingly so far. As much as I hated on him with the Sun Switch buy, I hate his itemization, but his the way he plays the map is incredible. Um, I just wish he had the Lich Bane, right? But we already mentioned that. And if they just play it like they did before, I know there is an Elder Drake coming up in 15, which they probably want to contest, but I feel like you just try to stall them to not re to let Vitus and Diamond not go to the base. Just play annoying. Never mind, Travel Bubble is engaging onto the ADC. Benjamin is going incredibly low, but Shield from Desire is coming in. Clutch Jolly now being one shot. Triple Buster oh shot, God. knocking the enemy out. Benjamin still alive. 
Karma did so much shielding. Jordi does not have the world ender available to him anymore, but he is going to go to base to teleport as he is incredibly low. Another jump is hitting on the Benjamin. Benjamin now knocking two back into his team. Oriana getting shot on onto the RVD. RV falls. Zelf with beautiful engage, but no teammate here to follow him up. And that should be a free outlet break. Maybe trying to ult out Jonathan Isaac with the CC, but Jipix is there to just auto attack the bear. And the bear trying something, but is just running away. Jipix. So fast, so shielded, so much jumping, so much everything. As he is an ADC, and we are in League of Legends season 14. Thank you. Balancing now, um, beautiful fight for Diamond once again. Elder Drake gonna be secured here as well by Village and Diamond. They are the ones who are in the lead with the gold 3000 in stow and. Shipex as well, like you said, just being able to chase down maybe at the end right there, it's all oh, that was closer than I would have ever wanted it to be if I was the side of Vintage and Diamond, but no piercing arrow going to be able to take that one away. Jonathan is like, looking for a little bit of a red buff here as well. I'm at least trying to take that one away, but potentially being able to get the reset here, which means wasting a little bit of time out of Jonathan Isaac, but not even getting the reset in is quite unfortunate. And like you said, Benjamin just being able to force that fight, right? I was a little bit suspect, or I was suspecting a little bit that he might go for the base and then TP back because he lost a lot of health. But he just says, no, screw it, guys. I don't need the health bar. Just look at me, play with me. Ends up getting a beautiful flash on it. I want to say a little bit disrespectful from the side of Assassin's Creed because I think the second Benjamin walks up there, you need to be thinking that he's going to end up going for the flash in. And overall, a beautiful engage out of Vision Diamond. Yeah, beautiful engage indeed. And that's just, I feel like the theme of Assassin's Creed playing it really, really well. And they're just being too cocky and getting hit by the 9 in the end. I, I mean, it's just, it has been very re uh, repetitive so far this game, and now just Village and Diamond being 6, 5k gold ahead, having the Elder Drake, having the Mountain Soul, um, and having the better teamfight comp. Assassin's Creed kind of stopped playing the map as they did try to brute force onto the Elder, which I guess they thought like Elder buff is broken, we are getting the charm onto the Tristana, but there was no burst, there wasn't enough range, and they just tried to brute force to 5v5 against the 5v5 combo, and turns out it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Yeah, and as for Benjamin, I feel like having one hell of a game for himself, like Cholulu has been saying in chat as well, and one of one, the mid lane, top lane duo out of Village and Diamond, pretty damn good as the base map, getting cracked open, mid lane inhib being taken, as for bot lane inhib, gonna be destroyed as well, and the base is in shatters on the side of Assassin's Creed, they have still managed to hold on to both of their Nexus Towers. But I gotta admit, Gloomy, if this game keeps going the way it's oh, going... Oh, Travel Bubble I... is going in, trying to get the pick onto the mid lane, and he's being perma seed Storm Surge dealing negative damage, Trouble Bunk being forced to flash out, didn't use the Shockwave though, having like around 5 HP, every other item would have killed him there, but nice job by Travel Bubble <laughs> forcing out the flash of the Orianna. Maybe cancel, <laughs> never mind. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Storm Surge is so bad. She can't... Dodge the allegations. But look on the bright side, right? Okay, if you'll get Ari, right? Q a skill shot, E a skill shot, is Storm Surge a skill shot? No, which means you can't miss it. It is guaranteed to do damage. <laughs> yeah, but you won't proc it if you don't hit the skill shot. And you can't proc it on minions. Or oh, and you can proc Lich Bane on minions. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. You're, I'm, I'm on the boat again. I almost slipped off the boat. I almost. I, the boat was shaky, but I'm back on the boat. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome aboard, <laughs> Captain. I, I. We are sailing on the hate ship, not the hate train. As, I mean, maybe hate train. As there is a high noon rel in the game. He is driving a train. Oh, there was Sai in the track. <laughs> I'm getting somewhere that is not relevant. And John, uh, the British and Diamond is crack opening the top lane tower like it's a can of beer. And double bubble being in the bot lane. Never mind. He's resetting now. Look at the CS as well, right? 322 onto Jonathan Isaac, one will walk on 312. You see a full build out of this vehicle, almost full build out of walk, but Baron not being taken. This is melting. It's just melting like smooth butter, and I, I don't think Assassin's Creed Grid have anything they can really do here. Why are they trying to fight it? Play the side lane, it doesn't matter, Benjamin. Dealing so much damage in these fights, Shipwrecks killing the bear, and this should probably be an ace unless it's from beautiful outplay, beautiful knockout by Delphia. He is trying his best, but his best is not enough as this is the SLE and not the LCS. Shipwrecks going forward, killing Trouble Bubble, 
Bastu shot, not even needed, and this is the game. Oh, the team P from what well, from sorry trouble with all there. I wanna say it wasn't worth it. We talked about it already. The team fight should go to win a bit of damage with their comp, but the Nexus Tower is not gonna blow up as well. Nexus is gonna be blown up. It is gonna be Assassin's Creed being taken down here in our game one village and diamond with a win. And I wanna say gloomy, it looked pretty damn convincing out of them. Yeah, I mean, it was such a head to head game, and then slowly but surely, Jonathan Isaac doing his best to like. Pulling his team slowly back into the game and then Benjamin popping off shipbacks, just seeing so much damage in these fights. Even though Rihanna started to have a little bit of value, at least more than the Storm Surge. But uh, yeah, beautiful game by Vidish and Diamond here. Getting that, it felt like Assassin's Creed Greed had the game in their hand and Jonathan Isaac just was like, nah. -uh. Jonathan Isaac is the one who ends up grabbing it. Right, right, right out of the other side. And it does mean that Jonathan is gonna be ending the game on 8 3 14. One hell of a game, I wanna say, out of him. But someone who I wanna highlight as well is Benjamin, right? Because while his stats, I feel like, don't look like amazing or anything out of this world, 3 4 14, all of us is there. He had some game changing ultimates, some great engages in that game as well, especially the commit on that bot side with the flash going in. I feel it was very beautiful for him and great decision making out of the top laner on the side of Village and Diamond. And like we said, right, their comp based on the 5v5 and that's the way they played. They took those team fights, played the game 5v5 and overall it was enough to net them the win. So the question is, right, is the Assassin's Creed going to have any answers, any response coming into this game too? And Gloomy, what would you sort of want to see out of them, out of the side of Assassin's Creed for them to change going into this game too? Outside of Trouble Ball, <laughs> not building Storm Surge. I did want to Because I knew you were going to bring it up. <laughs> I'm the world's biggest hater. But um, overall, I feel like uh, I quite like the draft out of Assassin's Creed here and I feel like if they just decide to they, they, they just felt like they were choking a little bit during the game and maybe it was just the nerves it was the first game again and this Village Diamond is a good opponent and it was just like okay game one you can be a bit shaky in the first game right and um I quite liked it if they approach the game the same way with a draft like this I want him to play more for the side lanes like they did in the mid game. Having the Ari being so obnoxious in the side lane. And if you already see it works like that, don't brute force the 5v5s then at this point of the game. That's the one adaptation I would love to see from Assassin's Creed here. Uh, we're gonna have to see if that ends up coming to fruition. If Jonathan is like pops up, pops off, sorry, once more and. Maybe Trial Bubble avoids the Storm Surge in game two, but we're gonna take a small break while we get ourselves and the players ready for this game number two, and we're gonna be right back, guys. So don't go anywhere for potentially the last game of the series.
Welcome back everybody to game two versus Village and Diamond and Assassin's Creed. We already saw Village and Diamond take game number one so gloomy. Now the big question that's out there, right? Is it gonna be a 2-0 or is it gonna be a 1-1? What are you expecting as the results today? And what is and do you think the side of Assassin's Creed can even this one up? I think not only are Assassin's Creed gonna even it up, I'm gonna call it the reverse sweep. And Ooh. Assassin's Creed are gonna sweep it clean. They're gonna be like uh, Pampers, you know, and just take the win. <laughs> is Pampers a German company or is it like international? I think it's a German company. Oh, well, fuck me then. I thought it was like international. <laughs> like, I, I thought I made like a fun. Uh, well, <laughs> anyway. You know what? For any German viewers in the chat, I'm, you know, I'm sure you all got that. I'm sure it was very funny <laughs> to at least a small part of the population watching, but I, I think they're calling the reverse sweep is definitely bold. And I feel like it can always happen as we are... Oh, this this is a quick banging phase. Oh. Yeah, we are blaming it blaming it on Pepper. The last few times I always was riding a stick. This time we are on the Pepper <laughs> hate trains. Today Salt is the goat and... Um, oh. Do you want Jinx? Maybe? From Assassin's Creed greeting? I mean, it wouldn't really surprise me if it is a B1 Jinx. Zeri obviously being taken away here and... Jinx is one of those champions where it's always exciting when it comes back into the meta, but then when it Jinx is in meta, she seems to be the best AD carry in the game and everyone's first picking her. Uh, Gloomy, I gotta be honest with you, I'm getting a little sick of seeing Jinx. Personally, I hate Jinx a lot. I hate Jinx very, very much. And oh. Kama being picked up by Vision Diamond looked very, very strong. But I want to go back to the Jinx pick as an ADC that is a complete hyper carry and... I'm gonna drop the insider infos here. Um, I did scrim a few games with Assassin's Creed Greed uh, when Travel Bubble couldn't play. And I just gotta say, their ADC is really, really good on Jinx, so I'm very excited to see their Jinx. Uh, see, th this is the difference, right? It's good to have someone who's in a team with the insider T, because this is not T that I have, because I don't do scrims. But we are seeing a Jarvan, is Jarvan locked away here as well. Gonna be paired up a lot, or not gonna be paired up, gonna be on the same team as the Karma. I'm assuming it is gonna be Jarvan Jungle, although gloomy. A couple of days ago, if I'm not completely mistaken, we did see a Jarvan top. So this could be, you know, could be either one. It's still a flex pick. Yeah, I hope it is a Jarvan Jungle though, because you just want to be obnoxious <laughs> to this Jinx in your early game and not just want to face her after minute 30, because top lane is an island till then. Wollipper being picked up for Assassin's and Greed here. Um, I, I hope this time they don't pick top lane. Wollipper was extremely obnoxious, but I did interrupt myself while I was talking about the Jarvan. I don't know why I did that, but they are, I'm interrupting myself again. They are hovering the Aatrox again. I hate it still. <laughs> Back to my first topic that interrupted... Whatever. Jarvan, really, really good here. Um... Jinx's biggest weakness is that she's an um, uh, immobile AD carry. Jarvan being the best, one of the best junglers into immobile AD carries equals big money. <laughs> big money. Uh, if it is the side of Village and Ever picking up this game, it will be big money for them, right? Because it's gonna be a clean sweep out of them. Gonna be so far the NAR hover, something we already saw in that game one. And going back to your point about the Jarvan, that is generally why it's considered the best counter pick to Zaya. Right, because Zaya is a very, very safe AD carry in the sense that she's got the Feather Storm, is able to sort of make herself invulnerable to enemy attacks. But one thing she can't do is go over terrain. And Jarvis Cataclysm does count as terrain, which means she cannot Feather Storm over it, which is generally why you see that picked up against Zaya. But like you said, Jinx very mobile as well as it's gonna be the Malphite locked in here. And it's already, I'm already seeing the side of Village and Diamond go with the comp of kill that Jinx. I really love the approach that Vision Diamond is taking here. They're not just brute forcing any draft like we play comfort. No, they are adapting the draft. They are seeing Assassin's Creed pick the Jinx, let's punish that. That is exactly what I love to see when people do it, especially on the red side. Red side is the adapt to the enemy, right? Um, that is the one thing that is strong about red side as much as blue side is the OP side. If a team can draft properly, red side can be so, so, so obnoxious to play against if uh, if uh, all players on the red side have a big champion pool here we see 
Jinx being picked early. But like, okay, we're taking the combat that worked incredibly first game. We're securing the job, and you can't pick the Malphite. If you pick Malphite on blue side here, we're just gonna slam a silo, slam a counter pick, and just gonna fuck you over. Ari being picked up this time from Twitch and Diamond, um, making sure Trouble Bubble, who was very, very impactful outside of the <laughs> item building, uh, can't get it again, right? He, as much as we hate on the Storm Search, he played incredibly well on that Ari pick itself. Um, so makes a lot of sense to secure the Ari here yourself. Um, and I love the drafting competition diamond here this game. Uh, I started laughing because I thought you were about to make a joke <laughs> about the storm search. <laughs> but yeah, the Ari gonna be on the other side this time. We have a catfish for the side of Assassin's Creed. And I love this pickup because basically what the side of Vigil and Diamond is, you're gonna pick an immobile ADC, we're gonna just pick very heavy dive, we're gonna try to dive on top of that Jinx, and one of the champions that definitely can do that, I was thinking of the Thresh as well, potentially, but another champion that can hey. very much get her out of safety is gonna be the Devourer, right? The Catfish in that bot lane, and generally this is a lane, I think, that we saw a lot a couple of seasons ago, where you pick up the Jinx, you pick up the Tom Kench, keeps the Jinx very safe, lets her scale up, but I... I'm indifferent about this Kaiser pick because I think it's interesting, but it also Kaiser is one of those champions where if it doesn't work out, it can very much crash and burn. Um, the thing is, uh, in theory, I like the Kaiser pick, uh, but I know I won't like it. Um, <laughs> I okay, <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> it, like I li like the Kaiser pick, but I know I'm not gonna like the Kaiser pick. Yeah, I would love to uh, the the AP poke. Uh build in this uh... game i think if you go for the poke kaiser this game uh there's no way for uh, assassins and greed to win kaiser's just gonna poke them down and then there's gonna be the hard engage from elf fight ari follows up everybody dies um you have to shielding from the karma to make sure everybody is safe while karma uh, kaiser just plays for the poke this build still incredibly obnoxious three w's and you're almost dead um but i know i'm 90 percent confident it's just gonna be an on-hit kaiser and because it's more fun and who cares about drafting optimally we want to have fun right i mean it is the <laughs> it's not the world's right but so i understand but i would love to see the ap kaiser here i it would just i in my opinion auto win which and diamond the game here if they play properly on the other hand i hate this way no matter what <laughs> i think that's definitely fair enough one of the issues i think i see with the ap kaiser says all the other magic damage on the side of the Jin Diamond, because already you've got the R, you've got the Karma as well. There's really no AD th or heavy AD threats at least for their side, but I definitely do agree with you. I think the AP build can be good this game as well. And keep in mind, guys, there is a Gamba setup in the chat at the moment, so give your points on the team who you ever who you think which will win, and make sure to gamble them all away. I won't, because I tend to lose all of my Gambas and let throw my points away, and then I'm very sad. But Gloomy, if you put your points on these two teams, if you had to choose one team to give all your points to, which one would it be and who do you think is going to take game number two? Although I know you said you're going to predict the reverse sweep, but you know, if we just look at the champions and the overall draft. Um, the thing is, I know it's not going to be an AP Kaiser, so I'm going to go for the Assassin's and Greed. Uh, I mean, you did say there's already so much AP on Vitage and Diamond, you kind of have no AD at all, which is true, yes. But outside of the Tom Kench, there is no big, big tank. I mean, you have the Wooly Bear, but the Kaiser kind of ignores it. She will still one-shot you, even if you are, have a lot of magic resistance, so you just can just play for the poke. But I I love this build, I am biased. Um, <laughs> I am a little bit of an LS fanboy, what can I say? Ooh. But um, yeah. I, I would give it to Assassin's Creed. Greed. Um, the Tom Kench pick is incredible here. The Swain pick, I hate this pick. I don't think Swain is a good champion, but I understand why you would pick it. Vigilant Diamond is a dive comp. They want to dive on you, and Swain likes it when you engage on him. He's a little bit of a masochist, a little bit of a bottom boy, which fits your mid laner as he is giving mad bottom vibes. Um, but <laughs> he does not like it when <laughs> you say that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I would favor Assassin's Creed to win this game. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I'm, oh, gloomy. I'm so glad to be on the desk with you, man. You don't even know. <laughs> uh, I think this game can definitely go either way. 
I feel like, especially looking at that game on Vidigy and Diamond, right? I think one of their strengths in that game one was the team fight, right? We talked about it, and yes, it was for the most part the comp they had, but overall, I feel like their execution in the team fights as well was pretty good, and trying to get Jonathan and Isaac those resets. And I like the fact that they've drafted like that again, right? They've got the Malphite, they've got the German, they're gonna play for the 5v5, they're not gonna play for the side lanes. And if they are gonna be as strong in the 5v5 in these team fights as they were in that game one, they should be my favorites to take it. But I think we saw Wacky Race run this way a couple of days ago and they looked good on it. It did. I don't exactly remember if they won the game or not, but I feel like the Swain did look good. It was the Iron, granted by his side at the time, which also did a lot. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the Swain is gonna pair up without the Iron on the side of Assassin's Creed this time on around. But overall, I'm a little bit concerned that they might run out of damage if this Jinx does fall behind. Because you look on the other side, right? You've got a Ari, you've got a Kai'Sa, so you've got the Jarvan as well. Whereas on the side of AG, when it comes to sort of 5v5 team fight sustained damage, you've got the Jinx and you've got the Swain, but Aatrox, unless he can really get up in there and bypass the Malphite, bypass the Jarvan in this front line, he's not going to be able to do a lot of damage to this back line. And Ari, a very mobile champion, is going to be jumping in there with the Killer's Instinct. It means that this Aatrox is going to, I feel like, have a tough time reaching these squishy targets, which is one of the main things about Aatrox. You want that reset in, you want to get the reset on the World Ender, because once you do, it's gonna extend that durability, give you a lot more power in these fights. Yeah, it's gonna give you... Uh, yeah. Just what you said, I'm not gonna repeat it. Um, <laughs> I felt a little bit like a music box just repeating a lot of times, but you, you just hit the nail on, on, on the point. And, and... I'm very conflicted about the draft. You know, it's Ooh. like... Inside of you are two wolves. <laughs> Out of any animal. <laughs> don't, no, wait, don't you know this meme? No. Wait, it's like inside of you are two wolves, and then there's like Alpha Sigma male, and then the other wolf is like, nya, 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 Uvu Eagle. It's like... What? It's like a, it's, it's a meme. I'm it's sure like a, it is. I'm sure it is. Uh, it is. I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send it in, 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 in the SLE later. Like, dude, it's a very popular <laughs> meme, okay? Very popular, I'm sure it is. It is. <laughs> I'm being judged for no reason. <laughs> I'm feeling like a mage in the Masia. <laughs> oh, oh okay. you, you feel like Lux when Garen came along. I feel like Silas. Oh, the sh you feel shackled. <laughs> yes, I'm oppressed here. <laughs> Back oh, to the point I was trying to make. Oh no. God, I love this girl so much. <laughs> um, I really, really, really like how Vintage and Diamond adapted the draft, going for the full dive. And on the other hand, I adore the Tom Kench pick. Um, and we have seen Delph playing like an absolute monster in game one. As much as he was a bit of an unsung hero, I feel like as they did lose the game. Delph was incredibly impactful in the first game, hitting these four men ults. Um, his rel was disgusting. And if if a support can do it, Delph is one of them. Um, he, I, I, His peeling was incredible. And I feel like if he does his job well enough, the Jinx can maybe 1v9 it here um the Ari and the Kaiser if it's like the 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 normal attack Kaiser both will be on the ass of the Jinx which will be quite annoying especially paired with the Malphite or Javanel. but at this point if they all just focus on the Jinx you can't ignore the Swain and the Aatrox I don't like the Swain pick I don't think it's an incredibly good pick overall I don't like the champ I feel like something like I I know a Syndra. Would I would have loved a Syndra here? I would have loved maybe an Asol. As much as it is a bit annoying to play against Javan, Melfort, Ari as the Asol, I think the champ is just too broken to just ignore it, anyways. And he is an incredible Asol. He does play it. Um, I feel like there would have been better picks, but in the end, it's not like Swain does no damage unless he goes Storm Search on Swain. Um, I feel like the Swain is gonna be very very impactful in these team fights, and you can't just all five men full commit on the Jinx, because if you do that, the Swain has enough time with the Aatrox to just slowly kill you. Um, 
they're just playing a mid no no the iron pass uh how do i explain this in not card game terms uh, <laughs> <What>? uh... <laughs> explain it in card game terms and then we'll we'll decipher it assassin's agreed right now are playing a very mid-range deck with a very um late win con with the jinx <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, um, overall, I feel like outside of the the jinx, the rest of the team wants you to go slow, but it's not like they are a slow team. Um, during the fights, I don't know how do I describe it without sounding like an <laughs> absolute psychopath? Um, Aatrox has both has sailed. I think it's too late. <laughs> No, it's not. I can fix it. The wolves, the wolves. <laughs> oh no. I'm really hoping that we don't see a storm surge on the Swain. I'm really hoping that we don't. I think Swain, unironically, would be one of the worst users of storm surge as well, because storm surge generally, it's all of burst damage. And for someone like Ari, sure, you got a lot of burst damage, but Swain really does not. Your main yeah. job is to be a drain tank and to pump yeah. your ultimate and slowly drain these ultimates Ludens, or these tanks. Luden storms with Rabadon's double ult pop. You you are so lucky I don't have trial mod powers anymore. <laughs> oh no, I can still disconnect you from the VC. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh they can you see? I oh. can also confirm that the side of Vision Diamond won the Gamba by 57% to 43. Oh, so I overall... forgot to gamble. Oh, no. My no this, this is good. This is, you didn't sway the results. You didn't sway the results. <laughs> True. This means In, this inside, is purely viewer based. Insider trading. <laughs> I mean, the script is written. Right? We, we already got the script before the stream even started. Peppa knows the script. That's yeah. why you see all this camera, him focusing top mid lane right now, it's in the script. Yeah. All of this has been already pre-written before it's this game even started. All uh, Linus's master plan of making Sanctuary the most oppressive part of the SLE. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some might say it already is. Like, there's a lot of good Sanctuary teams. I yeah, feel like an overall, it's... I feel like a really good community for those who do speak German. I unfortunately do not, so I don't know actually what goes on in the Discord. But if you do speak German, it's, I, from what I've heard, a really chill place and overall just a good place to chill and vibe. But someone who might not be vibing is Wobblebomb because he's potentially under threat. He is under a lot of threat. Maybe being here to go onto Wobblebomb. Wobblebomb, apparently, no, he still has the charm available, just decided to not use it onto maybe. Now maybe going incredibly low, flashing oh. in on getting the first, but really weird play. Travel Bubble being alone. This way, having almost no damage right now, no healing because he doesn't have to hold. Nice flash. Ooh. Oh, I got blue balled. Oh, Wobblebomb is almost dead. Both of them are really low HP here and. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of maybe his flash right there. I feel like it was a little bit of a panic flash coming out from the bear, but overall it is a winning play for the side of Village and Diamond. And keep in mind as well this Ari, right? Ari is such a strong champion if you get ahead, but just because of all the mobility you have. And I think this flash is a little bit weird for Wolfbomb because it looks like he's trying to flash the EQ from Jonathan Isaac, but it unfortunately just ends up going through as well. Maybe like we said, a little bit of a strange flash here. I want to say out of him, Trouble Bubble did a great job here of trying to pull in Wobblebunk under tower, but just outside of turret range. They're a little bit unlucky for him. But overall, a winning play for the side of Vision Diamond and an early gold lead for them as well. Yeah, I mean, you're incredibly happy here if you're Vision Diamond. And getting the Ari ahead in the early game, as there were some weird flashes there. Um, I mean, maybe try to flash in, getting some heal off and... Um... Try to survive it, did not work out. Ari got the first blood, Ari got a red buff, and now there's the fight in the bottom lane once again. Jonathan Isaac still has the flash available, didn't use it in the fight before, but does not use it here as well. Delph being forced to flash over the wall, and this Jarvan is obnoxious. Yeah, I mean, that's what we like to see, though. When you are playing the Jarvan, you need to make that early game work. Jarvan, one of the best early game gankers in the game as well, and already getting assist to his name, getting some pressure down towards the bot lane as well. Delph is gonna be flashless at least for the next five minutes and overall Jonathan Isaac with a great early I'm gonna be able to head to his top side now 
I saw a big of his top side, maybe he's also scouring around up there, the bear doing a little bit of counter jungling as he's gonna be in the bush and potentially meet Jonathan Isaac here. And Jonathan Isaac is there, Flash is still available to him, didn't use in the last two fights, as maybe is trying to go for the 1v1, Jonathan Isaac is just gonna dash out and the eye of Saurian from Swain going up there. Oh. oh. Yeah, look, look at the damage from Ari by the way here. Like, yeah. Imagine if you had Storm Search, too. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you if you have Storm Search at minute 5, I'm sure it will have some value. But if you have a full item on minute 5, every item have, will have value. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you've got a full item on minute 5, you're going to be pretty, pretty far ahead. Or like, <laughs> on everyone. And it's got to be some grubbies here picked up as well for a side of Assassin's Creed. We'll see if it ends up being 3-3. Three, three for both teams like it was in that game one or whether it's gonna be six scrub domination for the son of assassin's creed but so far they are the team on the back foot maybe he's already got a death to his name behind by about 600 gold here as dragon can be picked up but it is warded by the son of assassin's creed so they can look to contest it if they want to i mean probably not the Assassin's Creed should not try to uh contested in my opinion as the real control issue for vision diamond trouble bubble and maybe are in a position wobble bug is a third rushing forward just trouble bubble is just being ran down he yeah just why <laughs> <sighs> yeah i think it's when you especially when wobble bug is level six overall as maybe he doesn't have flash so he should have no way of getting into this pit, but for some reason he is still chilling around, just waiting. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Oh, Gloomy, I don't like how close that was. I... Uh, <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Oh, I, I'm not a big fan. That was scary for the set of British and Diamond. They do end up picking it up, but it was a close call out of them. And we said that this Wayne is gonna be pretty tanky later on in the game, but for now, he's gonna be a pretty squishy boy compared to the damage coming up from the other side just ends up falling very early on an overstep I want to say from the side of Assassin's Creed because if you look on the side of Vidish and Diamond their comp is very good at catching out that one person right especially with Bobo Bob being level 6 he's got that spirit rush he's gonna be very good at jumping on you and bursting you down and the burst ends up landing onto Trouble Bubble but Jonathan is gonna level 5 again trying to visit this mid lane the Trouble Bubble so far has been under pressure yeah, I mean, it's so hard to play the game as when in the early game. That's why I hate it so much. You're just like a Cassidy, but with less scaling. Um, I That's how it feels to me personally. But Delf did find the Javan here that tried to go to the mid lane. Javan just goes so simple reset, trouble bubble, being safe and sound. Oh, it's just because Jonathan Isaac not being quite level 6 yet, it does mean that there is no cataclysm to lock down Trouble Bubble. His flash is about to come up as well, so not really gonna be able to get a kill or shouldn't be able to get a kill onto the Swain at least until that flash is gonna be burnt. But maybe as well now looking towards the top side of this map, Crab gonna be picked up by him. Jonathan Isaac trying to get level 6 ASAP just so I can potentially visit these lanes, but overall I feel like top lane and mid lane are not going to be easy ganks for him as the long as the flash is up on trouble bubble, so that Cataclysm potentially could look down towards that bot lane, depending on how they want to play the game. What I would love to see here, um, I, either ganking, I think ganking bot lane also is really hard with the Tom Kench being there. Um, I, I would love to see a gank on the mid lane, uh, you don't have to get a kill if you just get a mid lane gank, forcing the flash off the Swain and then just repeat gank. I think that's what you would like to do here. But Jordy is running in the trap 2v1, world and not available to him, and she's gonna get run down. Stoppable force, not even needed right there. Benjamin just ends up walking out to him, box him on the head. Same with Jonathan, that's a great engage out of him. But looking for a little bit of an invade now on the top side, Jonathan Isaac walking in here. We are maybe gonna see a fight, maybe is trying is going up to Jonathan Isaac. So much damage is coming out from the bear. The bear did get the smite off and what the fuck was that? Wait, Travel Bubble almost killed Wobble Bunk here, but now Swain having no ultimate available to him, maybe doesn't have it the Oh! The shield of Malphite got taken down. Let's go. A big value on the Super Mega Death Rocket right there. Ends up all the way down from the bot lane. 
up towards the top side of the map. I won't leave. Trying to get a little bit of a snipe in. But it's gonna be six grubs here for this side of Assassin's Creed. And I talked about it earlier. I think if you get five, six grubs, even four, it is really good for you. But six grubs, I feel like, really strong if you can hit some of these towers. And overall, if you look at the side of Assassin's Creed, I feel like they should be able to hit some towers this game. Have with having Jordi in a side lane. And as well as Jinx having a lot of range with those rockets, definitely can shoot down a bunch of these structures. Yeah, I mean, Jinx is... Uh... With Chisana, Jinx and Chisana are the two best champions to take the towers in the early game. And they are Jinx still taking it down very, very fast the later the game goes on as well. Which is the reason why she's so strong in the side lane. And which is the reason why you see botted accounts always having 500 Jinx intro games. As she can just run down the towers. And by uh, having these grubs here for the Jinx, you are quite happy with that one. And what I just like to mention here is the incredible cs lead from jordi here onto the malphite as he did get caught in the gank from jonathan isaac but usually a very hard matchup for the aatrox and he still has a 30 cs lead yeah and definitely missing that cannon on benjamin not gonna help things there either it's like, <laughs> unfortunately a minus one under tower but jonathan isaac now over towards the spot lane potentially looking for a play does know it is worded it knows as well that trouble bubble is around so it's gonna be an outnumbered play if they do want to go for it that's top oh. lane now Sorry. almost got the solo kill but the world ender was used and the unstoppable force was not uh so i think malfa can just teleport down here to the bot lane but no aatrox is going Oh no, Aatrox is just trying to take the tower. Malphite does have the teleport available to try to join the fight. Aatrox has it as well, but he does not have the world. And Jonathan Isaac dodges the traps. Oh my... What? Delph! Oh, Delph almost kills uh, ADC. Jonathan Isaac only kills the fro catfish. Not a frog, it's a catfish. Um, But he catfished as a frog the way he tried to kill his own ADC there. <laughs> trying to catfish himself onto the other team by grabbing I Won't Leash there. Yeah, not exactly sure. Why the Devourer ends up coming through, I feel like not ideal out of him, but overall like, great play out of the rest on the side of Vintage and Diamond, because they end up picking up the kill there, and look where the gold is going to, it's gonna be Shipex now. Gloomy, I know you talked about it earlier, as I might have to hold the thought, maybe potentially walking in, but I know you talked about it earlier, the Kaiser build, you don't like it, and with the lethal tempo, with the new curve in his inventory, it looks like it is leading the way of that sort of AD Kaiser. I mean, AD Kaiser can still be very good, especially if you are snowballing, can be strong, can be obnoxious, especially dashing into the backline to try to kill the Jinx. I just don't see the value when the enemy team has the time catch. I would have loved to see the AP variation here, but it's not useless. It's not a storm search. <laughs> <laughs> but we are seeing an engage here in the bot lane. Delph tries to go into Josiah, but with his engage and... It's... Oh, oh wait, nice. Travel Bubble tries to go for a solo kill. The Bubble Bank does not have the Spirit Rush available, but yeah, he just go for a trade, takes the wave, and Swain almost deals damage. Bubble Bank just kind of right clicks his tower there, ends up walking away, and keep in mind the Spirit Rush is gonna be up very, very soon, as well as Jonathan Isaac's Cataclysm here, so they can definitely look for a play in the mid lane as Travel Bubble, no flash for a pretty long time as well. And for now, Jonathan Isaac looking towards the top side of the map, Benjamin with Unstoppable 4 still up and available. Yeah, but I feel like Jordi could t potentially have played. He has the world, and he has the flash. He flashes the unstoppable force. Yeah, I think Jonathan Isaac sees the same thing and instead tries to go for the mid lane. Travel bubble, no flash, no ult, no mana, no nothing, but a control ward that spots the enemy jungle. Yeah, the control ward MVP right there. I think without the trouble bubble, might have been in trouble as he has no bubble, but he is going to be able to back away at least. For the moment, going to live to see another day. No mana as well, would not have had any mana to back away there. Just I am going to meet Delph um, down towards the bot side of the map. But so far, no objectives going to be coming up on the bot side of the map soon. So I'm expecting for some action in the top side potentially, as the Herald is going to be coming up. And so far, we are seeing a gold lead on side of Vision Diamond. But most of that gold is on the bot side of the map, which means if there's a top side fight, it's not going to have much influence. I mean, it's not going to have much influence, and even in the overall state of the game, mostly being on the Kaiser here, and the Kaiser is just at some point going to get values by the Jinx. Uh, Kaiser very strong, very obnoxious in the early and mid game, but Jinx scaling so, so much better than the Kaiser, and unless they are able to, like... Oh, wait, Benjamin is engaging onto Jody. Jody is flashing a little bit too early, well, then not available as he did use it before. Some time, some when, some something. Benjamin going incredibly low. Jordi going for the incredible outplay. Benjamin falls maybe here to help his top laner. And yeah, that's the rookie of the split. And Jordi getting a kill as well, Wolfbomb down. 
Well, we are seeing a fight. The jump goes wide, has to flash out and use the spirit rush. And wait, oh, he. Oh, huh? hmm? Okay, he's I mean. He's toying with him. He's toying with him. He's going back in, he's going back out. It's a, Keep the two wolves. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice inside his head. His, bite, his mind is telling him yes, but his body. His body is telling him no. Oh, wait, Jonathan Isaac now trying to go into Travel Bubble. Travel Bubble now has the old and has the flash available at Wobble Bunk. No Spirit Rush, no nothing. Josiah also here to save his mid lane as he could have gotten into a little bit of danger. As no ult is, no Cataclysm. Now they are going back inside Travel Bubble. Now he's used his ultimate, but he still has the flash available. Is he maybe being forced to use a Josiah? Yeah, he. Josiah presses W, but Travel Bubble is able to flash out. And fun fact Karma. Uh, Mantra W is the second longest CC in the game outside of a long range Ash ult. Is it? Now, is it longer CC than Morgana? It is. Max rank Q? Max is the. Yeah, but if you're having a max rank double Mantra W, it is the second longest CC outside of the Ash era. No, no, that's. I am <laughs> being called out by production right now. So... <laughs> We are perfect. Oh, actually, I love it. I love it. Taking the tempo out of their ADC, and that was a nice rocket. It's about sending a message. <laughs> it's it's about making sure that they know because now Shipex is actually that is a lot of damage onto Iowa at least. The Jinx gonna have to play a little more defensive now. Shipex did yeah, end the... up using the killer's instinct. Yeah, that was the killer's instinct, and like they just took out the tempo. Shipex having no killer's instinct, he does have both summons available, but he's not gonna get the crash in properly. That was that, that, I really like the rocket there. It, it completely destroying the tempo. Wobble. And you have heard it here, folks. Gloomy, a big fan of the rockets. <laughs> I like the rockets. They <laughs> they go boom. <laughs> I like trains. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, so you know what that, thing? but you don't know that too. Oh. Well, I like trains. It's a classic. Yeah, it is a classic, but like. Yeah, I, I, obviously, like, I, like it was a classic, but like, I don't know, like, I feel like sometimes talking to a boomer, to like an then alpha with you, that's like, you're like kind of everything and nothing at the same time, you are the meme limbo. <laughs> you know what, I've been called worse things. <laughs> I've been called worse things. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Wobblebunk is going for the engage, the jump goes wide. Uh, Wobblebunk now maybe a little bit of danger. He does have the second Spirit Rush stack available. One more left. Teleport is coming in from the Malphite. Unstoppable Force is a uh, uh, Trouble Bubble. Just they are oh, beautiful CC from Trouble Bubble as they are trying to go. And Benjamin going onto the Jinx, but he is alone. No one there to help him, and they're just getting slowly run down because nobody can hit skill shots. and. Beautiful, beautiful play by Travel Bubble this team fight. And if the game keeps going like this, we are potentially looking at game three gloomy because so far at the side of Assassin's Creed really just got their stuff together this game. And again, just looking at this team fight, Wolbon goes in for an early spirit rush trying to catch someone, but really just doesn't get anything out of that. And it just the side of Assassin's Creed walks in there. Unfortunately, Benjamin does double the force, just not be able to catch out anyone important really here. It just goes on to the Jinx, yeah, but you've got no follow-up, you've got no one behind you as the rest of your team is completely getting run down by the Swain in the mid lane. Oh, and the picture by picture, we are seeing a Javan ult right now going on to the Jinx as the Devourer is coming through. I'm really sorry for interrupting you there, but I just saw this happen. That's okay, I didn't see it happen. <laughs> so it's good. And there's the six scrubs, right? Seeing it getting the bot lane tower, that's where they're powerful. Yeah, they are so the ship packs going in for a little solo kill. That's why you go for the 80 variation. Trouble bubble being so badly positioned to just get killed by the ADC. But maybe and Jordi trying to go for a little bit more shipping because there's no summoner that's available. The Cataclysm also isn't there for that. But the old, when it was there, shipping's just gonna die as never mind. I'll find someone like you. Excited Jinx <laughs> is there. She's trying everything she can. Josiah is able to flash out. Jonathan Isaac also has the flash available. Is he forced to use it? Yes, but maybe is on his tail. But Jonathan Isaac is out. Oh, it's such a banger song too, but yeah, it is two kills picked up here for the Sun of Pigeon Diamond. I want to see Shipex jumping a little bit too deep, right? They're going melee range into a Volibear plus an Aatrox. I feel like not the move, especially without that E evolve, not able to go stealth quite yet. Very aggressive 
I feel like a little bit of an overstep out of him, but overall it is two for one, so still a favorable trade for their side. And Jonathan has like with the Sundered Sky as well as the two Sundered Skies on the other side. It does mean the Sundered Sky minigame goes over to the side of Assassin's Creed, and so far they're not really that far ahead in gold. I think 700 gold, yes, but uh, if we can take a look at the individual gold, I would love to see who that's really on because i know the bot lane for virgin diamond bound to be ahead but it's in the top lane where it's a massive lead for jordy right there yeah jordy just like 50 cs lead in such a hard matchup and that is why he did get the rookie of the split and the top lane of the split jordy just playing so impeccable here it's it's crazy but now i know why shipix doesn't go the ap build because he can't land w <laughs> Yeah, so far it is going to be the, the AD build coming through and Village and Diamond, keep in mind two drakes in pocket as well, it is the Infernal plus the Cloud. I believe we have an Ocean Soul for us on the other side, so if they can potentially on the side of Assassin's Creed pick up the rest of these drakes, it should be good time for them as the Knight's Foul going to be complete for Jonathan Isaac. So who do you think this Knight's Foul going to go on? Do you think it's going to be on Shipex just to make sure that Kaisa is a little bit more tankier? I mean, you you pr probably have to do this. I mean, what you usually go on the on the if you go for the knights on the jungler, what you do is um, every time you go to a lane, you just put the knights well and the uh, on the biggest carry that is around you at the moment. That's why you usually like to go first item on something like a Sejuani. This is where it it you sees the most play in the jungle. But uh, I mean, you probably just put it on the shipex. Shipex with its build having to go quite melee, like not full melee. Obviously, he still has his range, but he will. Unless his uh, lethal tempo is fully stacked, he will always be in the range of his Wainal. He will always be in danger of the Aatrox, always be in the danger of the Wooly Bear. Unless Malphite gets a dive onto the Jinx and he can just follow it up with the Killer Instinct. But you, during the fight, you probably just want it onto your AD carry, on your AD carry here, yes. And I think the big thing with the Knight's Vow is well, Gloomy, right? It's very cheap. Because it's generally considered a support item, so it's very cheap to buy. And that's why it's as effective. As well as the mid lane tower, not gonna be under threat. Shipex trying to get this one, but my boy, you ain't got no grub, so it's gonna take you a while to get that tower down. No void mites for their side, and you can just see now the side of Virgin Diamond trying to group up a little bit more, trying to sort of play around each other. As it is just gonna be the lane swaps coming through, like you said. Shipex and I are gonna be hanging around in that mid lane. It's gonna be Benjamin matching Jordi, I think, for the most part of this game. I mean. I understand why, like, right, you did pick the Malphite counter pick into the Aatrox, and most of the time, the Aatrox shouldn't be oh, able no. to just run the Malphite down, but now we are seeing a little fight, the Delph is going incredibly low, but that's what I mean, Chipex is being immediately ranged, the Kill Instinct is coming through, Cataclysm now onto Delph, Jordi is being held by the cage, that is the ultimate of I won't leash, now was eaten, but still dies, everybody falls, I don't know what is happening, I'm just talking something, words, 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 so many kills, Wobble Bunk with a flash jump, coming here onto Trouble Bubble, using the ult, using the flash, still falling, this was a flash of hope, more a flash of cope, I don't know what I'm saying, words, 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 what a fight. Yeah, it's a great fight out of Shipex, especially, he does a great job here of keeping himself alive. Jordic with a great flank, I want to say, but it just doesn't work out for them because they don't end up finding Shipex. We talked about the carry, the Kaisa on the side of Village and Diamond, and Benjamin as well does a great job with Wolfwalk to find the backline. They get the Ari onto the Jinx, and ladies and gentlemen, this is what the Ari can do when we don't build Storm Surge and we go Horizon Focus instead. Yeah, Horizon Focus, a lot of value, Storm Surge, negative value, and <laughs> six Arctic Sex here for Wobble Bunk. I love Dark Seal. Great item. Karma, just, just want to put some attention on the shield that Karma just did during the fights. Ship exceptionally should have died there, but uh, Karma Gaming, we love to see it. Enchanters for sure are balanced. Um, but Enchanters are played in the bot lane, so it makes sense that they are allowed to be broken, as uh, we are aware the lead design, the balanced design guy, I forgot his name, I'm bad with names. Um, not, Freak? not, yes, Freak. Freak is an AC main, so we are having a lot of bias here. Um, thank you, Freak, for this amazing meta that we are having. I love I it. I'm an ADC main. I love uh... it. I'm on. Oh, oh, <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it every day of the week. Give it more to me. Should have been sooner. Hopefully, it will last a long time. As Jonathan Isaac now looking. Double bubble being in a lot of trouble. Joke we made three times by now, but he is not gonna fall as the CC is, root is gonna connect onto Benjamin. Dro the, 
uh, Malphite ultimate is being forced. Beautiful CC once again. Wobble Bug in a lot of danger. He said that one more Spirit Rush available, but he does fall. Jinx is excited one more time. Oh, baby, baby, she's taking the wave now. I won't leash with a big shot down there. And keep in mind, Death Timer's this late into the game. You can see 40 seconds onto Wobble Bug, but that fight, it seems a little bit disjointed out of the side of Vidigian Diamond, because like you said, right, Benjamin, with the unstoppable force backwards, while Bulwonk is jumping forwards, and it's oh, just not breaks, match well. Ship. Oh my god. Your heart. What was the reckless throw here? <laughs> Your heart. <laughs> the blood pressure is spiking. Man, Diego isn't even here, and I still felt a heartbreaker. Oh man. Nah, that was game one. No more. Yeah. They, they got the one game with it. Yeah. No more. They just don't want to bring it back. I mean, so far they really haven't needed it. It seems like Jonathan Isaac is still even not on the Viego. 3-0 on 6. This man still having one hell of a game for himself, right? Still deathless and yet to fall for their side. Still working to get himself a little bit more tank kill. Kindle kill in his inventory. Not entirely sure what item is going next, but we're just going to have to wait and see. As Dragon going to be coming up in about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. But Baron for now going to be on the card. Shipwreck should have his evolve on the E. As well should have that stealth which makes it a lot easier for him to live in these fights because you can already see the side of Assassin's Squid definitely have tried to target him a little bit in these team fights. Yeah, I mean it does make sense to just target him down and these fights are getting so hot with this time at this point. The jinx is getting so much in the game, having the infinity edge available now and for this joint diamond should have played the early game. They had such a big lead in the early game, they should have played it out a lot, lot more, and now the jinx is so disgustingly strong and if Vintage and Diamond doesn't get their shit together and fights to fights like they did before, I don't see any hope. But on the other hand, it is not over yet. It's kind of, they are still ahead in gold, not in draft gold value overall, but in just pure gold they are ahead. Um but I feel like the val uh, we are seeing a little fight here. Benjamin is just going low and I the Swain is doing a lot of damage as the method only as armor so far to survive the Aatrox, so Swain have, is still just shredding down the stone. It's, it is a blue buff here picked up for Jonathan Isaac, and keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, with this season, if he picks up the blue buff, everybody is gonna pick up the blue buff. Very useful on the champions like Shipex, champions like Jesse, as well with the Karma and the Kai'Sa, just being able to give a lot more poke if you have the mana restoration coming through, but you can just see as well that shield onto Shipex is so big, of Josiah and Gloom, you already pointed out earlier, right? So far, Josiah has done a great job of giving those shields to Shipex and making sure that his AD carry stays alive. Yeah, I mean, Josiah, probably with, his, with how great his karma is, I'm sure he also gives very good E head. It is an almost perfect E girl level of gameplay from the karma here, and. Uh, we uh, are probably gonna see a little fight over the Drake here. This is spawns in 30 seconds, and. But oh. looking up at the summoners, ev oh my god, everyone's got their flash. Ev it is everyone with summoners, oh. except Jordy T with TP. So this is gonna be, if it's a fight, an explosive one. So far, the side of British and Diamond, they're not opting in for it. They say, we don't want to fight. I like that a lot. British and Diamond, unless they are taking more than they can eat. Uh, I, I really like the play here, just going for the two towers, like, okay. That's what happens when you don't play for the mid prior before the Drake fight. You're just gonna lose everything. Very cleanly played by Vision Diamond, being like, okay, you're taking river control, but you do not have the mid lane control. But now the teleport is coming in from the Swain. Swain is very far away. Vision Diamond is seeing him. The eye is coming through. Shield onto Shipex. Wait, what happened? Benjamin, no flash. Benjamin, no ult. And the Malphite is gonna be so useless for the rest of the fight now. Uh, but Trouble Bubble being alone in the backline maybe is there, but not there enough benjamin dies alone in the back line while swain dies alone in the other line and what handshaking like <laughs> reefing mid laner versus griefing top laner what is happening here they're not oh, done bank with a charm onto the catfish it does not matter jonathan isaac being alone into the enemy team once again but he can run to his teammates jonathan isaac going back in the wallabunk charming on maybe now jordy is alone being focused on but so much healing is coming through from the atrox he is not going down josiah also holding his team alive the kaiser finally falls to jinx is excited and she's gonna shred through all of them arcane baby can maybe kill josiah i'm not sure sir no no he can't no, mind. Shit. 
be able to pick up the final one there. Delph is quite Ooh, low. that's if the Spirit Rush available. Beautiful jump. Oh, the Devourer is still available, but now Delph is dying. Wobblebunk now. One more stack of the Spirit Rush available. Maybe there to help this ADC. Is Wobblebunk trying to go for a little bit more? I hope not. Maybe. Ah. Oh. Unfortunately, it does end up running out, but I want to point out as well. Will want just use his ultimate. It is on a 20 second cooldown. It's maybe potentially running him down. Oh, maybe it's flashing onto Wobble Bunk. Maybe it's a 20 second cooldown, but the charm goes wide and he cannot stall it this long. But can we talk about our broken malignant? I mean, 20 seconds still, still not long enough to make sure he lives there. But look at I won't leash without the lack of with the lack of Benjamin in this fight. There's no tank, no frontline. He's pretty much free firing for in this entire fight. And I believe you said it earlier, Gloomy, right? Jinx very strong in the meta right now, which means if I want Leash gets to free fire, they are just gonna be able to take away the fight. The charm just and just does not land there, but we already saw it later on Bobo does end up picking up Delph, so that is still one kill back. But overall it is another dragon for the side of Assassin's Creed. Two two ocean dragons in their pocket now. Still two away from that ocean potential ocean soul so still quite ways away. As we, that is gonna be at least ten minutes away if they take it on timer. I doubt, I doubt they will. This how this game has been going so far, but overall, a hell of a team fight. I want to say for the side of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I mean the team fight played incredibly. The spacing from Iron Leash was disgustingly good there. Now he also has the lot Dominic's regards finished up, which he didn't have to fight before, so he should also deal a lot more damage to the Javan and the Mel fight. And um, yeah, three items on the Jinx. Now you're getting close to like the once Jinx is full build, she's just gonna take it over. Like 2020 World Song? Was, was Takeover 2020 or 2021? I got no idea. Well, one World Song that was pretty <laughs> forgettable, but pretty good in my heart. But, you know? Yeah, <laughs> oh, God. I, I feel like it was one of the best ones, to be honest. I, I still think Rise is like, it is very high up there on my list. Yeah, Rise is, Rise is kind of good, I'm not gonna lie. It's just, it's so good. Un unlike what isn't goated, is I feel like Wobblebox ultimate quota because 20 seconds to me on an ultimate that gives you three dashes and does a lot of damage, it just does not seem fair to me. Yeah, I mean, Malignus is such a disgustingly broken item, even though it's been nerfed already, it doesn't matter if he can't hit the charm, but he has another chance in 20 seconds. Yeah, like, it could, that's the thing, right? You can just go for plays like that because Gloomy, like you said, it's a very short CD, which means it's gonna be back up in no time. Right, and you're gonna be able to get those resets off of any kills you can get as well. But you can see the pain starting to come through. They want to transfer over to the bot side, despite this dragon not being up for some reason, taking bot side control instead of top side control, which I don't really get why. But you do see Jordi as well over towards the bot side of uh, trying to get the split push on in. And this now, the side of Assassin's Creed, just gonna walk into the top side and gonna be able to start the spire. Maybe. Never mind. Uh, oh, wait. Del? Going in a very weird position. Why is he going there? Shipix now onto Delph. Everyone is on there. What just happened? That's a donation out of Delph right there. He didn't want to be long for this world anymore, so he's just gonna to win, toss himself over to the wolves that you mentioned earlier on. And uh, oh, on. the wolves are gonna collect him as it's gonna be an inhib picked up in the mid lane. They can potentially transfer this over to a Baron buff as well. Yeah, I mean, the Jinx now without the, the Kench available is just very, very vulnerable. The rocket will be uh, here, will be up again soon, but now maybe, maybe no way, Chipix, no, nobody steps up, everybody's fine, everybody's okay. Uh, I, oh, uh, Gloomy, I get scared sometimes. I guess when Chipix does that, I get very scared because that could have been very bad, I feel like, and is, they're still looking. Yeah, I mean, Chipix with his gameplay, very fitting that Jackie Love skin, as Jackie Love plays exactly like that, sometimes stepping a little bit too much forward. Still winning worlds, something a lot of people <laughs> will not do, in fact. I mean, um, he might have won worlds, but did he win the SLE titles? Well, no, but uh, legally exactly. he can't play SLE. True. Yeah, like, I, I heard some insiders, uh, the entire IG 2018 roster, tried to come back to split, that's why the Shy doesn't have a team, right? He was like, okay, I only want to play in the SLE. And so the 2018 IG roster was like, hey, can we play in the SLE? And then Linus called his lawyers that he's paying with the um, grip money that he's getting, like depending which team pays the most. 
decides like where they are in the script, right? Yeah, um, I, that's why we don't have Faker either, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tried to join into the SLA, we just said no, 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 you're not good enough. <laughs> oh, Shipex, oh, Shipex keeps using these E's forward and it's scary, it scares me. But again, oh, it's... Bubble Bunk this time hits the charm on Trouble Bubble. He is getting dangerously low. He does have the flash anti ultimate available. Nothing much is gonna happen. Spirit Rush now fully used as. God, Vitish and Diamond being so obnoxious. They're 24 7 pressuring. Trouble Bubble is forced to flash there. There's Wobble Bunk abandonment just being annoying. Trying to they're stop the game. Yeah, they're just canceling the resets. And wait, is they're that a Freeman X Pekka angle? Oh, can they get a tower? Can they get it? Oh, this Swain reset. The, the Swain teleport did not come through, and I think that's just game. What ladies, a way to end it! Ay, caramba! And ladies and gentlemen, Gloomy mentioned it earlier. This is why the mid waves are so important. This is why you need to play through them. And this is exactly what happens when you don't. Village and Diamond just kind of takes the mid wave, they just walks up into the base, take over the Nexus, end up blowing it up. And what a hell of a call from the side of Village and Diamond. Yeah, they just. Dry hump the Nexus. I don't know what just happened there. It's just, it looked so like, okay, let's push the wave and then, like, oh, wait, they're kind of overstepping here in the jungle. We can cancel them. They can't do shit. Let's just go for the end. And they did go for the end. I oh, this... just, I don't know what to say. It just was like dry without any emotions, like a very bad one that stand after too many drinks. And that's kind of what Shiki is saying in chat, right? There was a very dry loss out of them. This does mean. The side of Assassin's Creed, they're gonna move over to what I believe to be the semi-finals in the upper bracket. And they're gonna be facing up against either Eternal Blizzard or Ragnarok. Overall gloomy. If when it comes to those two teams, Eternal Blizzard obviously the expected winners going into that. So if the side of Eternal Blizzard do take it, it ends up being Village and versus or Village and Diamond versus Eternal Blizzard. Who are your favorites going into that? Um I believe Eternal Blizzard is my favorite for all of these games as eternal blizzard has beat the second best team in the sle black lotus esports very handily so if they can beat black lotus they can beat everybody you know what i mean <laughs> they are totally no bias no. <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about no, no bias whatsoever there and uh can i get confirmation as well do we have someone coming in for an interview here okay we we have gotten confirmation we will get a winner's interview here as well for you guys we'll see if we'll get rounded up for that but for ours to get ourselves set up for that we are gonna be right back for just a moment guys don't go anywhere as it was a very exciting two games village and diamond going to be moving forward with a clean sweep facing up against assassin's creed stay tuned guys don't go anywhere Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Winner's interview here coming out from Village and Diamond. The man in the top lane himself, the Malphite Enjoyer. We got Benjamin 
on the desk. Coming currently from a clean sweep against Assassin's Creed. Benjamin, man, how are you feeling after that win? I'm feeling really good. Always good to hear. And Gloomy, I'm going to toss it to you first for some questions. I'm sure you have some burning words to be taken away. So go ahead. Um, so what I, I mean, I think like the most obvious question, you will probably in the next round face off against uh, Eternal Blizzard. How do you yeah. think you, how do you think you can, wait, am, wait, did, am I wrong here? Wait, wait, um, um, you, like I said, you will probably face off against Eternal Blizzard and what do you think are your chances against them and how will you guys approach the series there to play the way you played this series and just apply it to the definite turn, turn, tournament favorite I can talk for sure. I think we're just do uh, about the same honestly, just play good around map like we did today and probably should be a nice 2 and one That's a you good question. We can like, you know, play ping pong. I question you question. Oh, I, I do like a bit of ping pong. One of my favorite sports, actually. I guess you can, I mean, you can consider a sport nowadays since I know there are a lot of people who make a lot of money playing it. But yeah, overall for me, again, congratulations to you, Benjamin, for that win. And it looked like very clean, I want to say macro wise, especially playing with that mid wave, the way you ended that game too. I want to say, was that like one person shot calling on your team, or was it just an overall team call that you got noticed? Uh, I'm not sh Honestly, I don't really remember. I think it was Shipwick that at least started the call, but I'm not sure, but like everyone just followed it. I mean, Shipwick's and maybe one other, but I don't remember. Like, we're like considering Drake for a few seconds, but we realized they were overforcing a Drake and then just cancel bases and go for end. And overall, I think a great play out of you guys. I think me and Gloomy mentioned it, right? We don't see a lot of people playing sort of around that mid wave. So Gloomy, overall, I was pretty impressed with that. Yeah, I mean, the way you guys played the mid waves was really, really, well, uh, really good. Um, especially game two looked a bit shaky. Like your early game was, you, you were pretty far ahead. Um, and then in the mid game, you just kind of fell off and then kind of came back with the mid wave. What happened in that mid game that it was all of a sudden so hard for you guys to play? Ah, we ran it on to Swine, honestly. And just got caught for no reason and slowed and had to disengage instead of doing massive engage, which was probably mainly my fault, I think. But, yeah. As so you're saying jungle diff? No. I'm saying oh. top gap. Ah, lucky. On, on the opposite side of this game, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's very rare for us to for us to have someone coming to a winners in here being so self-critical, I think. But it's I think it's always good to see a nice change of pace. And overall, I like we said already, you are very likely to head up against Eternal Blizzard. And we they are pretty much the favorites coming into this, but they are still yet to play their game, right? And we say they are favorites coming into this, but in your opinion, do you still think of them as favorites? Because they are going up against Ragnarok and is, are they gonna take that game in your opinion, or what are your thoughts overall about the Eternal Blizzard versus Ragnarok matchup? I think it's an easy 2 0 for Eternal Blizzard. I mean, I'm, ex I'm expecting the same thing, but it's always good to hear what other people think. <laughs> so, before we end this interview, um, first of all, uh, thank you for doing this interview. And do you have any any uh, message you wanna uh, say to your opposition in Jordy that you had this game? Yeah, I don't know. Ban Gnar next time, I don't know. Okay, the banter. Ban Gnar next time. I mean, Thank that's you very fair much. Enough. Thank you very much for taking your time for the interview. Uh, um, once again... For... Oh, I'm sorry. You, you... No, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Congratulations for the win. Uh, I, wish you... I hope you guys um, you know, are happy with the win. Take from the mistakes that you can learn, and I wish you a lot of luck on your um, upcoming matches. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, and that's gonna wrap us up for today, for the most part, at least. And it's always good to hear. I feel like from the winning team, it's always good to hear the thoughts. Whether it's the top lane, whether it's the mid lane, someone from the bot lane, the jungle, it's always good to hear thoughts. I feel like coming out of the winning team. 
winning team, but gloomy overall. I want to hear your thoughts about today because it was a clean sweep for Village and Diamond. I feel like clean sweeps are always a little bit more boring than spicy, you know, two ones. But what are your overall thoughts about today? And potentially, what are your overall thoughts about the Ragnarok versus Eternal Bizarre matchup? Because I think for me, that is the most hype one that is next one coming up. Um, for today, I feel like even though it was a clean 2-0, it was extremely exciting to watch. As it was very two back-to-back, -back, extremely close games. Um, but I feel like especially where Assassin's Creed faltered was itemization and these little these little things. Um. I mean, the Swain picking a second game, in the end, it seemed okay, it seemed nice, but it did nothing. And I feel like there were just these little things that, even though it were quite small, it set Assassin's Creed back quite a lot. And Nemedic and Diamond coming in and just punishing these little mistakes that they set up themselves and just taking everything from that. Um, Dari throwing her lead in the first game by going Storm Surge. Village and Diamond's like, oh, you have a useless mid laner. We're gonna destroy you now. The second game, uh, uh, Assassin's Creed going for the Swain, and the Swain was overall just kind of useless because they just kited out of the Swain ult, and the Swain ult then ran out, and then Assassin's Creed once again basically had no mid laner left, even though it looked quite good in some moments. It just didn't have a lot of impact, and then the way Village and Diamond just played the mid wave in the second game was incredible. So I had a lot of fun watching this series. Very, very exciting. And for my thoughts on the Ragnarok versus Eternal Blizzard, I feel like it should just be a clean sweep for Eternal Blizzard. I don't think that there are a lot of teams that can contest them at the moment. I think that's going to be a lot of people's thoughts heading into that matchup. Like we said, Eternal Blizzard, the strongest team based on regular season standings as well, right? The top of the table, strongest team coming into this. And I do agree with you. I think it was really interesting to watch today because to me, it seems like the side of Village and Diamond played just better together, right? They drafted for the 5v5 in the first game, executed their draft plan, I think, very well, played towards the 5v5 in the game too as well. It looked pretty close in some parts, but overall just the better macro, them eking out the victory. And I know I asked you about the Eternal Blizzard versus Ragnarok matchup, but if we look at the upper bracket, we look at the lower bracket, what to you is the most interesting matchup coming up and what is the one you're looking most forward to watching? Um, wait, wait, let me, let me take a look real quick. What are the matchups in the lower bracket? <laughs> uh, uh, Slimot, Snack Pack, Silver Phoenix, uh, Wacky Wraith, Dangerous Game Shark, Ubuntu, and DV, and Infinity versus Black Lotus. Um, probably I'm most excited for Slimot versus Snack Pack. Uh, so I feel like this is the closest game, in my opinion. Um, because if you look at it, I feel Wacky Wraith should just. Giga Slam Silver Phoenix, uh, Dangerous Game versus Shaka Bantu is. I, I think they should be heavily. I think Dangerous Game favorite, but to be honest, I think these two teams are probably teams I know the least about. So, I'm not gonna give an, a proper opinion about something I don't know a lot about. And DVN Infinity versus Black Lotus is obviously extremely Black Lotus favorite. No biasy at all here. But <laughs> what I'm looking forward into the lower bracket is the Slimmers versus Snack Pack matchup. I feel like that's going to be very, very exciting. I think it definitely should be. And I feel like a lot of these lower bracket matchups, I know a couple of days ago, Dangerous Game versus Shakabantu was mentioned. And uh, back then it was said that it was going to be an interesting matchup, but for all the wrong reasons. So <laughs> definitely could still go that direction. And just overall, I feel like this split for SLE has been really exciting, but that's going to close us off for today and gloomy overall. Just a really fun day, in my opinion. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Always a pleasure to cast with you, Dessa. Always, always. And thank you to everyone who was watching as well, right, to stuck by us through these two games. And of course, we're going to catch you next time on the SLE channel. We don't know quite yet what that matchup is going to be, but we're going to get that to you as soon as possible. We're going to catch you next time, guys. Don't be late. Bye-bye.